Yeah, that's that's a little awkward that this has to be hello like on hello. Okay, it's eight p.m. Gonna be so awkward <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Should we give people like one or two more minutes, maybe? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I and and uh, on the topic of the bot crashing, I did add a new feature <laughs> just. I mean, it's like it's a super tiny thing, so yeah. it shouldn't do anything. But I did just add it, so it could Ooh. totally break right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. We have to show off the bot. <laughs> yes. Yes. Let's see. All right. Praying for a high percent this time. Every time I did it earlier, it was like 10%, <laughs> 6%, 40%. I'm looking for above 50% oh right my gosh. now. Ropusuke is being right, a... We'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> He's being a little, oh, little devil. Bro, oh, 32%. bro, only 32%. 32%. <laughs> 32%. <laughs> so Hi, guys. We're just gonna um, give it like a minute or two in case like people are about to join. Radio time. Yes. How are you? How are you? Hello. So we'll, we'll do a proper in introduction once it's maybe like 8.02. Oh my god, no! look at this. What is this? No! This, what's funny is no! what's funny is I did I did the love command between me and my me and my alt account. So uh -huh. it was like little Satan and, yeah. and Satan with two ends. Yeah. And it was like it was like 90%. 90%. <laughs> so I love myself, but I don't love anything else apparently. Oh my Let me gosh. see, I'm gonna try it again. So love. Too funny. My alt account, Satan. Is it gonna is it gonna be big this time? Oh, okay, four percent. Okay, four percent. A little self loading tonight. Right. <laughs> so real. <laughs> yes, this, uh, this, this, the true biggest Robuscape fan. Yeah, true, like eighty four percent. That's crazy. <laughs> that is high. Oh my gosh! Why don't you give me like one percent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm scared to do it. <laughs> oh, you got yeah, you gotta do it now. Let's oh, see. Oh man. Okay, we'll see. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I think you gotta put a oh. Ropusuke's name next to it. Ropusuke. Oh, no. Satan, that's not bad. Satan 30. Not, not the no. biggest fan, but you know, definitely <laughs> more like than dislike hey. for sure. Okay, I am offended. <laughs> <laughs> what, what can I say? The bot doesn't lie. I don't know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe we'll get started. All right. All right. Rindy Radio number one or episode one. Yay! <laughs> Hi, hey. everyone. Thank you for joining. So, here is our guest for today Satan. <laughs> or however Ooh, you want to introduce hello. yourself as. <laughs> and streaming. Yeah, and stream. Stream. Yeah, Goodbye. <laughs> we just I just want to show up the bot no more. <laughs> it's like the end. Bye bye. <laughs> hello, hello. Episode one. Yes. Okay, so I guess if you guys are, I mean, I'm sure everybody here is like a regular. That's a weird way to say it. It's not like we're a restaurant here, but you know, um, I'm sure everyone here is a regular. So you probably have heard me talk about this radio thing. Um, so I guess just to briefly explain what it is. So I um, guess not to dox myself, but I am uh, Japanese and I love listening to Japanese uh, radios um, done by like bands or like musicians um, I find them just really entertaining and chilling mm, like I love listening to them while I'm drawing and stuff working so I was like hey maybe I want to try something like this like this could be chill this could be cool um, and it would be like really cool especially to have guests per episode so that's where my brain got going and this thing kind of got started and <laughs> our friend here volunteered himself <laughs> to be the first guest so yeah here we are um me i am already babbling here but yes that's the yeah that was the idea behind this whole project um thankfully 
quite a few people were interested in it. Oh. <laughs> yes, the cameras. Yes. Chimeras. <laughs> Camrys. <laughs> yes. So yes, uh, our brave friend here uh, volunteered to be the first guest. So, uh, okay, I should shut up. Do you want to maybe briefly introduce yourself? You can like, um, literally... Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess my online name is Satan, Little Satan, either one. Um, if if that offends you, if like Satan's a bad a term for you, I, Katen is fine. <laughs> my real name is Elliot, so you can also call me that. Um, I uh, I so uh, I, I approached Rin not too long ago with kind of a proposition for um, developing a, a Twitch bot for them. So as you can see in the chat, now, we I can do like some silly commands. I can do love and the rope escape, like the, the Rin's mascot and also the name of the bot. And it'll give you just like a random number of like, there's this love between the person who issues the commands and whoever else you put, like rope escape or like anything. Um, and then the less silly commands, like now you can just type in like con info and you'll get um, uh, Rin's upcoming con info and stuff. So, yep. That's all the bot does for now. Um, I had some issues. I've never used like the Twitch um specific python api or whatever so uh there's a little bit of trouble but it, it's it's going pretty good yes i <laughs> he's trapped in a robot like, like, <laughs> yeah isn't this the coolest like it is so cool like i feel so fancy literally <laughs> well maybe robo <laughs> yes. feels fancy i don't know <laughs> like he is not just a familiar but he also is a bot like so cool yeah yeah so if you yeah, guys we, we trapped his soul in a robot. <laughs> <laughs> he must have like multiple souls. Maybe, so, yeah. Yeah. We oh people are already trying. Yeah, I was gonna say you, you guys should <laughs> try <laughs> the the love nice. between yourself and Ropusuke. <laughs> oh my gosh, this one is funny. There's 29% love between Proxy and <laughs> the Narvi. There's only 29%. Yeah. Dang, Mook, Mook loves Ropusuke, apparently. Oh, yes. There's a lot of love Yay. between them. That is awesome. Mook Congratulations, <laughs> Too funny. Uh, yes, like, um, yes, like, total, a total genius. Like, how cool is this, you know? Like, I, I only know really, really basic coding, so this is, like, sorcery to me. So when, like, Elliot uh, slash Satan reached out to me about this, I was like, mind blown like is this like possible project you know <laughs> so it is just so cool um and then like uh, you can always do like question question mark and socials right yeah and then yeah i need to clean it up but i just typed in whatever that i could like oh there you go <laughs> yes <laughs> like that so cool and you were able to do this because of your background in data science is that correct yeah, so um, uh, I'm like a like a mathematician by trade. I, I've been like I've, I've taught math. I've done a lot of math stuff. And uh, semi recently, um, I, well, I guess a couple years ago, I got my associates in math, and that's what like uh, let me to start teaching. And uh, I kind of realized pretty quickly I don't want to teach like kids. I, I <laughs> kids are insufferable, and like anything <laughs> below like fifth grade, um, I kind of felt like I'm like a babysitter more than a teacher. So. Uh, yeah, so I went back to school and I started doing like programming and coding stuff. And I'm doing data science now, but um, I took just a couple like C and JavaScript and coding classes and stuff. So that's kind of how I, my first big project was actually a Discord bot, which uses mm -hmm. a super similar structure to the the uh, the, uh, the Twitch bot. So it's, it's not, not too bad. It, and you know, we say it's like a super, super smart guy or whatever, yeah. but it's pretty simple. Like everything... Like, I mean, realistically, if I was I, honestly better than I am, I probably could have done this, most of this in like a day or two days, three <laughs> days or whatever. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm proud of it so far. I think it's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, so cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, Proxy is saying like, people with talent out here on the radio. And I'm like, yes, I feel like everybody that I invited and um, well, agreed to be on this radio are pretty, pretty damn talented. So I'm really excited about like, having you today and of course other people uh, later on uh, math scares me <laughs> yeah it, it yeah. scares me too don't worry yeah math is scary like literally i as i was saying um 
like throughout my school days, I literally just memorized formulas without fully understanding anything. <laughs> I, I, I did okay, but I, I never really fully grasped the, the concepts or whatever. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So we we did have a conversation prior to this first episode, uh, and I wrote down some. Well, I formed some questions around our conversation, and so I'm gonna maybe try asking you the questions one by one. Um, I'm just gonna make sure like we're not. I'm not just throwing you the questions to throw you the questions. I wanna make sure we are. Talking about something relevant before I throw you these questions. Yes, you see the piano. <laughs> Everybody plays the piano. That's cool. <laughs> and I you mean, it's the easiest instrument. You don't need like I, I played like a uh, like a lot of brass instruments when I was growing mm -hmm. up and stuff. And all this like tone and embouchure and this and that. But the piano, you just need like two hands and. You get... Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, I used to play the clarinet, and it. Thinking back, it was the most disgusting unsanitary instrument ever well maybe the oboe is worse but like the reeds you know fucking disgusting <laughs> oh 100 yeah i mean yeah. yeah the same with like brass you play like yeah. trumpet trombone tuba and stuff and like you, you play a yeah. line you get a chance to rest you you open the spit valve yeah. and it's like it's disgusting yeah it is insane oh my gosh so yeah now we just do pianos uh the bass <laughs> yeah <laughs> my gosh <laughs> Yep, yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, right mm -hmm. I I do remember kids um in band uh like purposely flicking the valves at people and that was really disgusting. Ooh. Maybe that started my germaphobe um days. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. The flu. Yeah, there's so much spit in there too. Yeah. I swear. Anything you have to do with your mouth is pretty pretty dang nasty just a little bit <laughs> yeah um so just to go back to our friend elia here our homie elia here uh so what made you want to study data science because you know you mentioned that you are your background is actually in math you know so like what made you want to I, I you already talked about like the kids and everything but just to yeah guess, for sure uh, basically yeah. so i have like ideas and things I want to do, but um, I don't necessarily, at least now, want to like I either either take the risk or or put the effort into it and like, and like make it into like a job or whatever. But I have like things I want to do and I wanted some, <laughs> this is not like really shallow or whatever, but I wanted some occupation that I could do easily, hopefully work from home kind of thing that makes yes. a lot of money. And data science is, a, is like a big field with that kind of stuff. Yes. Um, and I mean like, you know, I, I've taught I've taught like college level statistics to kids in the past, so like mm -hmm. I I've, I have a lot of experience with statistics, and that's like a lot of what data science is, anyways. Mm -hmm. And then you know, I'm some of my passions include light like coding type stuff, anyways. So I guess I kind of just like married the two mm -hmm. to make hopefully what's going to be like a pretty high mm -hmm. paying job in the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Like in in demand, like highly in demand for sure, right? And like. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned like I mean, you said the word shallow, but <laughs> that's the biggest thing when you choose work these days, right? So, because nobody really yeah, wants to go out there to work. Like, if you can work in the comfort of your home, like why not? You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and like the maybe this is digressing a little bit, but the high-paying job part too. Like, you know how some people will say that money doesn't matter to them. They're just doing this job because they want to like, I don't know, make a difference or because that just because they enjoy doing something. Like, I don't trust those people. <laughs> Cause yeah, like, yeah. I, I get that. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Like people that say that money doesn't matter to them. Like I, it's instant. It's an instant red flag to me. Cause like, I don't know. Maybe this is for later, but yeah. Yeah. Well, and it, I, I've kind of, I think I still do or, or will like express that sentiment of like, oh, money doesn't matter to me. But it is like, you can at least tell that like that person's probably coming from a pretty decent place of privilege. Mm -hmm, so it's mm -hmm. easier for them to say stuff like right, that. Right, right, for sure. And uh, But yeah, it, it's just kind of weird for sure. Yeah, for sure. Because 
don't know, when people say they like money, they're not being vain or shallow or anything. They need money to survive. So, yeah. you know, what's wrong yeah. with that, you know? But, yeah. yeah and sure. I've noticed that people that always say that money doesn't matter to them are typically, typically the ones that love money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so true yeah. I guess yeah. So, yeah so it's weird i yeah maybe uh yeah it's, it's a tale for another day but yeah there i i knew some i knew somebody um that was totally weird about money but would say things like that but anyway i'm so sorry it's <laughs> i do tend to just go everywhere money is a form of energy it really is i mean at the end of the day it you you need it to survive like if you don't have it, you die. So, I love money. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> we'll stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Maybe, uh, maybe we can work this question into our little conversation. <laughs> uh, so, what is your favorite part of data science? Um, like, what do you find I really fun? Like so one of my favorite things pretty much ever has been finding ways that I can use math in like real life, especially mm -hmm. like complicated math. Mm -hmm. Like anyone can go to the store and like calculate what the fuck like their taxes are going to be on what, what they're buying or whatever. But you like hope so. <laughs> I get to use like interesting and intricate like statistical models or like stuff from calculus or like this and that. It's like it's like really satisfying to me. Mm -hmm. Um and like and like my favorite kind of games because I'm not, I'm not like a super super gamer but for the longest time the only games i would play were like puzzle games especially mm -hmm. like math kind of oriented puzzle games mm -hmm. but like just being able to use stuff and like tricks i've learned from math mm -hmm. um like outside of the classroom or whatever so definitely uh that's part of it um we talked a little bit about it but i'm most interested in so that there's you know you can use the data science and more and i guess less broadly but like mm. ai and deep mm -hmm. learning and stuff like that for different fields there's like um as, as we've seen recently all like the freaking uh, like image bots that generate images based on key terms or whatever mm. and before that there was like the um the bots that google would make that um given an image they would kind of uh kind of guess that or, or try to tell what was in the image and mm. either the, the percent that they believe that that's correct or whatever mm -hmm. but I, i'm a lot more interested in like uh language processing natural language processing with with data science so i'm mm -hmm. interested in like recreating not just like like or not recreating but like teaching a bot to like use our language to communicate things on mm -hmm. its own just without giving it like a, a specific instructions on what to say yeah, yeah. and then also like understanding and copying ways people communicate with each other mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. that's like the, the most interesting thing to me right now in, uh, mm -hmm. in data science i guess mm -hmm. do you wanna do you do you want to talk about the the Discord AI that you you talked about yesterday? Was it yesterday? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> basically, what I guess I guess we'll kind of like oh hello first time chatter hello. <laughs> I I guess what uh what um kind of what originally opened my eyes to like data science and stuff was um I'm I'm my first university was a school in California the University of California Santa Barbara. And I was in their Discord server. That was like 2017, 2018. And um, they, they had a bot, which was called Chancellor Yang Bot. It was our president of the school or whatever. It was a bot like kind of based around him. And I guess the bot was created by some of the data, data science club kids who I actually knew pretty well. And and, and I, I got to see the bot in action. So what the bot would do is it would have access to certain channels in Discord and like the, the school's Discord server or whatever, and certain people. And it, it, would, it would log like everything that's being said in the server and then it would kind of like synthesize some 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 senses i don't remember if it was like mm -hmm. every every hour every day every couple of days or whatever i, I kind of forget but just just seeing like a bot synthesize stuff mm -hmm. based on what we're saying and it'd be, it'd be so cool to like see parts of your own speech mm -hmm. or things you'd say or things you'd said recently mm -hmm. in the bot and uh if like i don't know if there was like a big league tournament going on and everyone's type of like pog in the, the discord <laughs> or whatever it'd be funny seeing the 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 bot just go like pog 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 or whatever <laughs> or then other times you you know if you have like a specific way you type or like you always add little you know like simple emojis or whatever to your text mm -hmm. funny really funny to see mm -hmm. the bot pick up on that and start doing it in its own its own like typing or whatever so yeah. that's like I, that's like the the story about that i guess yeah that's yeah like when you told me about that yesterday it was yesterday right 
Oh, yes, uh, okay. Yeah, I thought it was so neat because like, yeah, that we can teach these bots to like learn how to talk like us is it's really interesting. Uh, so yeah, let me sure. just quickly say so, Muga. <laughs> uh, so I, if I'm being honest, I'm not a huge VTuber fan, but Muga is like the only. Um, the only, um, I guess, exception. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, you guys have to. You guys have to go check out Muga. I mean, already famous, but you know, just, just one of a kind. I want to say they are a one of a kind. So you guys should just go watch them. Just the coolest. Oh, sure. <laughs> yes. And hello, Brandon. Let's see. Yes, of course. I literally don't really watch VTubers because I uh, am not used to seeing them, but Muga is the only exception to the best. <laughs> if you ported it to the server, I treat it like a puppy. Can we keep it? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> uh, but, okay, so going off of the Discord bot, like, just, just just thinking um, out loud, I guess. It would be so cool if we could teach, like, Ropusuke to talk like us. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, definitely the goal is to, like, make this, like, yeah. lang like lang language processing brain that mm -hmm. I can attach to different projects for sure. So I have, like, my own Discord bot, my own servers, mm -hmm. and then definitely could also 100% attach the Ropusuke, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ropusuke! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Oh, good wait. voice pitch yeah yeah well it, it, it's interesting so honestly like a, a long-term thing and i you know this might never happen but mm. it'd be really funny if i had attached that natural language processing bot it picks up on you know a lot of people in the servers um mannerisms or whatever mm -hmm. and you know there, there's so many and this is ties back into into data science whatever mm -hmm. my field there's so many uh, like voice synthesizing AIs uh -huh. out there. Like yeah, a yeah, really yeah. popular one I use actually is yeah, uberduck.ai. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and you, we could like pick and, and shift, like pitch shift or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I could do various uh, like voice packs from from this and, and give Robus K kind of a voice. So mm. instead of just typing in the chat oh. things it thinks up on its own, mm. it could like on your stream, it could like kind of talk mm. to you or whatever. That, that'd be pretty cool. That That's not like a so super cool. long term. That'd be cool. <laughs> so, like, uh, so he would. So, wait, he's my character, so why, why do I even say headcanon? <laughs> but he does speak in the human language, but he also knows how to speak in his own, I guess, familiar demon language or whatever. Uh, and, but when he talks like a human or talks in the human language, I think he has the suffix Q. So, for example, if he's saying like, oh, nice. uh, um, Ropusuke, he'll be like, like something like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's very sim uh, very silly, I guess. Um, but it would be cute if he were to talk like an Animal Crossing character. Just be like... Eh, meow, true, meow, true. Meow, meow. <laughs> that would be kind of cute. Yeah. 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 Cute. Because <laughs> you know, like, he is a jackalope. So technically a bunny, I guess. And they don't really make like sounds unless they're scared or mad so i was like what sound can i give him and i was like maybe q makes sense i don't know because he's yeah, not a sure. yeah it's cute. yeah if he were a little little mouse it would be chew but yeah q <laughs> just q <cute. laughs> uh let's see sorry i'm like talking over you like when you are the guest uh, I'm <laughs> I'm yeah uh and then uh you know uh ghost toma who just followed uh this channel two minutes ago i feel like they are from my fashion instagram i f i feel like unless the the handles are just crazily similar i feel like they are <laughs> anyway hello hello um uh, okay so uh i know we were talking about like the data science that you study and everything but i guess it's this doesn't necessarily have to pertain just to your field um but do you have any like short-term goals like, short-term goals yeah i guess it doesn't have to be like 
your study related it could be personal but maybe maybe if you don't want to talk about that it could be your school related short term goals or whatever well, you absolutely <laughs> my main short term short term goal is to get out of school because I'm 23 and I've been in school for like 2 2 billion years <laughs> two um, billion I'm years. so ready to leave <laughs> So that, that's that's the, that's the main short-term goal. Mm-hmm. Like I spend, you know, I'm taking a billion classes right now just because mm-hmm. I'm trying to go as fast as possible, mm-hmm. which sucks because all the classes I have left are, left are really difficult. But, mm-hmm. but uh, so that, that, that's like the main thing I'm putting most of my time in. Um, but I, I there's other, like, sh- not as short because, again, a lot of my time is being taken up by that right now. Mm-hmm. But after that, I have... Obviously, I want to find some kind of job or whatever in my field. Mm-hmm. And if it's not in the field, you know, it's not that big of a deal. I, I'm pretty flexible and I have experience mm-hmm. with just like regular software development stuff. So mm-hmm. I, I feel like I could go anywhere. For but sure. Definitely after school, find the job. <laughs> I have some like like passion projects. I wish I had more time to work on now. Mm-hmm. One, I definitely should be playing more music more mm-hmm. often. But, you know, my life gets away from you or whatever. For sure. But I have two um, really big ones. So the the main I guess the one that is more relevant to data science would mm-hmm. be um, the uh, the natural language processing mm-hmm. like brain that I can attach to different projects For and sure. stuff and hopefully package and, and and use and possibly sell as a service or just open source or whatever. Yeah. So that's like a really really big one. My main mm-hmm. one probably right after school. Mm-hmm. Long a little bit longer term. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hopefully within like the next couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a, a game idea right which who doesn't right but, um, <laughs> who doesn't <laughs> the, 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 there's there's one type of game that just and we talked about this yesterday mm-hmm. but no, i'm just no gonna act like i don't know what you're talking games. about <laughs> but there, there's this and that, this and that game that gets made all the time in mm-hmm. unity or whatever mm-hmm. but i who doesn't real right exactly right, right. but so and we talked about this yesterday of course but to any, anyone else mm-hmm. if anyone's heard of this game series please let me know okay <laughs> so there's this like a niche nintendo slash sony game or I guess Square Enix game called yeah. Fortune Street, or I guess the Japanese name is like Itadaki Street or, or Itadaki, whatever how you mm-hmm. say it in Japanese. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? That that, that style of game basically. Mm-hmm. I, I've played that game on and off for a really long time, mm-hmm. and in the past couple of years, because of COVID, especially me and some <laughs> online friends have been playing a ton of the Wii version online. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's an amazing game. So the premise is. I guess uh, you could call it like Monopoly plus mm-hmm. Mario Party with mm-hmm. like a stock market. And so now that cool. sounds bad because Monopoly is this like crazy <laughs> six hour game. Six and even Mario Party. I mean, Mario Party is like a two, three hour game. For sure. But so Fortune Street is like a, it's like a one and a half to maybe three hour game, depending on what your like settings are mm-hmm. at the start. And it kind of plays like Monopoly. So you're all like rolling, rolling dice. Mm-hmm. Oh, and you get to choose your characters. At least from the Wii version, it's like Mario and Dragon Quest characters. Mm-hmm. But the later versions, which never got released in the West. <laughs> have a final fantasy and dragon quest characters mm-hmm. but so you're just rolling around the board kind of like monopoly buying up shops except uh there's districts kind of just like in monopoly but those districts you can invest in on, with like stocks Damn. and the more you invest into your individual businesses the more your stocks rise and it's such like a such it adds a, like a way more interesting uh-huh. um mechanic to monopoly so mm. and it has like it have like a little casino and like little mini games you can oh. play and stuff it's just it's so good so you know it actually um i'm curious because it, it sounds like you have to put more thought into playing it but it still takes less time than monopoly like that's kind of really interesting to me 100 yeah, percent. yeah yeah um it it takes yeah because i mean it, in, in monopoly you're doing a similar thing where you're mm-hmm. trying to buy within districts mm-hmm. and you're motivated by i think once you get a monopoly in a district <laughs> you can start uh investing and like getting little homes or whatever mm-hmm. but here like it's a little more flexible mm-hmm. in that you know you can start investing in you, you don't have to invest in your own mm-hmm. district you can invest in anyone's district mm-hmm. like Let's say my buddy Austin mm-hmm. already has a monopoly in an area, mm-hmm. but he hasn't bought any stock in that area. I'm going to buy up a lot of his stock and drive his stock prices up so that when he starts investing in his own district, I get the returns from it. Damn. So, it's so good. It is so, so there's cool. different like, styles of playing, right? Because you, uh-huh. you, can, you can be an investor investing in other people's uh-huh. districts, or you can like try to be like a real estate agent, kind mm-hmm. of like a, real, like, a, like a realtor and, and grow your own districts or whatever. So it's, it's sick. Yeah, it's so cool. Like... Uh... Like outside of that game, I've never heard of like a gameplay similar to this. So it's it's such a nice concept. I wonder why they they don't try to like market it more. You know, by releasing like new games and like bring it bring it bringing it to the west and everything. I feel like it could do really well. 
more my only guess is that it wasn't popular and that's why they haven't yeah, brought it over again yeah, right. um, I, I, I can understand like uh, uh, i'm like a board game nerd first so mm -hmm. you know i'm gonna look for that those kind of games for in my sure. video games for sure and then uh and so um so it especially is targeted towards me for sure and that's why i love it mm -hmm. so much but like, i can imagine people mm. especially not super into board games yeah. already not gonna like it that much yeah. yeah for sure i guess that's fair. and again like especially like my pitch is oh it's like monopoly and uh -huh. no one likes monopoly so. <laughs> not anymore <laughs> too funny <laughs> yeah. so nathan here he's seen um he's seen gameplay of of the game he just didn't know what yeah. it was called. That's cool. That's cool. Literally, like, uh, before you told me about it, uh, like, I had not heard of it. So I had to Google and I was like, oh, it's so cool. Like, with Mario and yeah. all the Dragon Quest characters. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, it is yeah. super niche. Yeah. But, um, so, so that, that that's like my, it's, it's, it's a long term goal. But, mm -hmm. you know, my hope is to be able to accomplish this within the next at least five years. Mm -hmm. um, Wouldn't so I actually cool? have a good buddy. <laughs> Um, from like middle school, well, not middle, I, th I think I met him in high school, mm -hmm. and we've been friends, you know, you know, since then. And mm -hmm. he's one of the ones that I started, uh, that I started mm -hmm. this project with, and um, and then playing the whole game a whole bunch with. Mm -hmm. We actually had a, a working build of it for a little bit. Um, we we were like super super new to any of this shit. We were just doing it in Unity, mm -hmm. and. Um, and I'm, I was the only one with any prior coding experience at all. He had he had basically none. But we, you know we, we got a, a good amount of uh, of a or like way in, into the game. But we we both have such busy lives that mm -hmm. we haven't had time to continue. But I think once we both kind of settle down into mm -hmm. whatever you know after we both get out of school or whatever, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll probably kickstart that project. Right. That was that's definitely like. And you know if someone else would do it, I mm -hmm. would feel less inclined <laughs> to want to do sure. it. Like like I, I don't want to. Like, I don't want to, like, make games. It's not something I really super care about. But just mm -hmm. because there's, like, a... This is a game that I would play. Mm -hmm. And then no one else played them. Mm -hmm. And I can only play the Wii version for so many hundreds of hours before I get to get bored <laughs> of my sure. fucking mind. So for sure. I'm, I'm, you know, if, if anyone else comes along in the next couple of years and makes it, I, I'll probably just chill. I'll just probably just play their version. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't yet. So, yeah, mm -hmm. spite game development. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's say nobody, nobody does. Uh... Would you think of it as a, I guess, a project for fun? Or would you, like, seriously consider, like, releasing it for other people to play? Or would it be more for you so, and your friend? <laughs> for people, like, PC users mm -hmm. here who use Steam, you, you guys know how easy it is to uh, to get a game on Steam. Like, if you go on the Steam homepage, oh. you'll see some wild some stuff I can't even say out loud. That's how crazy this some of the oh. stuff that gets on re the release on Steam is. So it must be pretty easy uh -huh. to release stuff on uh -huh. Steam. So my thinking is, if I'm going to go through the effort of making it playable, such that it's actually fun and interesting to play with my friends, mm -hmm. I'd probably end up releasing it, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Making games that you want to play sometimes come with negative side effect of working on it so much that you're tired of it when it's released. Yeah, that that is pretty true. Yeah. I, I think that yeah. comes with any like art form, yeah. I guess. Like, yeah. if you, if you really, especially the more you work on a piece, I feel like the more you end up painting it. I did some like music composition in high school, and the more I would work on a piece, the more I end up painting it when I mm. heard it afterwards. So it's kind of just an unfortunate yeah. I think, side effect. Yeah, yeah, it is unfortunate. Like, I guess. Um, I mean, I'm sure not in many of our as I say our, just, I'm just thinking about like my art friends. Um, I guess not, maybe not in our case, but you know, when people do say like, even if you love art, when it becomes your job, you'll start hating it. Like, I guess it's kind of like in the same vein. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's, when it becomes work, it's not fun. When you're working on it too much, it's not fun. I guess there's, yeah. there has to be a balance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. Although... I don't know, like, in my case, and, like, in... Oh, maybe I'm just assuming that all my friends are like me, but, uh, you know, I do art full-time, and I really do love it, so I sometimes don't understand when people say that, but maybe it's because, like, it is also a one-man business, not... It's not me, like, going to work for somebody to do graphic design, so maybe that's the difference, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, because we were just talking about board games, uh, board, favorite board game? 
Can you pick Favorite like one or two? Game? Yeah. Um, that it's it's tough yeah. because it super depends on like the mood and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I figure I say board games. Yeah. But it, it's like it's for me it's more generally board and card games. Mm -hmm. So probably what started it was playing Magic the Gathering when I was oh. young. Um and then still a little bit now, I, I, I will play like once every six months or whatever mm. nowadays, like a, a game mode called Commander with like some friends. Mm. But that that's kind of what started it. So that's always going to have some kind of special place in my heart. Mm. Um, board games more generally, mm -hmm. I, I love deception type stuff. Oh. So like um, <laughs> like Amogus board games, basically, but oh. before Amogus. Uh -huh. So there was one that I played, I, I first played at university in California. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Coup. Cool. And so and it another game by the same developer is called Resistance or or Avalon depending on which version you mm. play. So just generally like this this like like deception social engineering type games. Mm. Coup is a game. Uh, it's pretty interesting. So there's, it's like two to six players or whatever, and everyone starts the game with two rolls, mm. and you can do a two uh, like um, I think one action per turn. Some actions you have just innately as a player in the game. Mm. Other actions you have that are based on your rolls. But the, the the kicker is is that your roles are only known to you, and you and you get to uh, lie as much as you want about uh, what roles you have to do whatever actions. Oh. So the, the gameplay loop is we're all gonna go in a circle, huh. and we're all gonna have like a like a bank like a set of, amount of money, mm -hmm. and we're gonna like take money from a pot, or we're gonna you know use some of our abilities to do certain actions, and the goal is to be the last person standing basically. Oh damn! And so you have actions <laughs> where like everyone can like pay seven coins to just kill one oh. like one of. A person's two actions mm. or i could like let's say i'm like there's a character called like uh oh wow which one is it i think it's like the ambassador or something where you mm. can like shuffle your some of your cards back in and then draw new oh. uh rolls and stuff so there's all these kind of actions you can do nice. and so whenever someone takes an action that's like a roll action and everyone gets a turn or like a chance mm. to to call someone out and be like you're, you're a liar you're, you don't actually have that role oh. and you can kind of like kind of like battle so mm. it, you know the person who's being accused gets to reveal a card and if they actually have that role then the other person like loses a life or whatever uh, but if, if they reveal a role that isn't the role they said it was mm. then, then they lose that life Damn. so it, it's a super interesting like I, I love just like lying to my friends <laughs> thing, so that's yeah, cool is a great one <laughs> resistance and so the other game resistance is mm. basically just among us you get to do actions everyone gets to vote on who they think the the bad person is or whatever mm. so it, any kind of like social engineering like lying kind of mm -hmm. games my favorite too <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> yeah i don't know too much about board games like i know we talked about this while we were we were playing um your turn to die like my my only experience with board games is pretty much like watching people play um the werewolf game i don't even know what yeah. it's called like the the actual any gaslighting games <laughs> Like, that's lighting games yeah it's, i love it so much I love, I love lying and being lied to it's like it's like everyone's at their most vulnerable you know oh my gosh uh are you are you good at these games like would you say you're very good at like deceiving your friends not not outside of board games just <laughs> just when you're playing yes. these games yes yeah that's so funny but, uh, i i think i think my my biggest skill comes in like mm -hmm. the resistance slash avalon mm -hmm. style games where um, you're working in like I guess Among Us or whatever kind mm -hmm. of games where you're working in a team. So when I'm when I'm like the imposter or mm. or like the alien or whatever like the, the bad role is, I, I'm I'm pretty good, especially in like with my closer friends. But I feel like I'm pretty good just picking up on other people mm. and understanding and making plans without even saying anything. I, I think that's my biggest skill. Mm. So I love like like plotting without actually like <laughs> say, like talking to each other. Uh -huh. That shit that shit like feels so good. And like when I Damn. when I get like one of my close friends. Uh -huh. Like a team, and then we just like know what we're thinking. It's, yeah. oh, it feels so good. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> That's great. They oh, what, what uh, when I was with my big friend and group mate, a player tier, let's say ranked. <laughs> Deception nice. fantasy <laughs> football. <laughs> they, <Nice>. uh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Those those games really do sound fun. Like. Because I've never watched, like, real people, like, that sounds so weird. I've never watched people play those games, like, in real life. So I would love to just watch some people play that, like, in front of me. Just so that I can watch and observe. Yeah. I don't know if I For would... sure, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I would be good at playing these games. <laughs> there's definitely, like, there's, like, a, a type of, of board game player. Mm -hmm. So that I'll, I'll 
generalize into three categories, mm. right? So you have like the the people like me who want to win. Like mm. I, I'm competitive. I'm 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 gonna lie as mm. as best as I can because I'm trying to beat you. I'm trying to win. Uh-huh. And th- this kind of person, I feel like, unless you're playing with a bunch of other people that are also like this, mm. it, it it doesn't like. I, I can see why people wouldn't want to play, especially with someone like me, because I'm like mm. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be trying my best. I'm gonna be pretty good at lying. <laughs> and then there's and then the two other categories probably are like very casual, so they're just gonna go with the flow. Whatever mm. happens, happens. They're not gonna try too hard, but if they win, that's cool. Oh. They're, just, they're just here for like the gameplay or whatever. Uh, that's and then the third me. kind of person <laughs> is like is like the the mayhem like cause or like it's the raise chaos raise. Hell, oh, no. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, I think generally each kind of group prefers to play with similar people. Maybe maybe the people who like to, like, rain hell kind of mm-hmm. like to play with more casual people because mm-hmm. it's easier to, like, cause chaos with people <laughs> that are just, like, going, going with the flow or whatever. Uh-huh. But, yeah, so the, I, I think it, it, it's, it's, it's a big, like, balancing act of finding, mm. you know, what your play group is going to be most geared towards uh-huh. and, like, and, like, actually, like, you know, if I'm playing with people who are, are going to take this game super casually... Mm-hmm. If if I'm trying really hard and like lying super all the time or whatever, mm. it, it's not going to be as fun for everybody. Right. So it's, it's it's like a balancing act, you know. Yeah, that's so interesting. If they even for board games, you need to like find out about each other's styles and find a balance. <laughs> that's yeah, so sure. cool. Guess like gatekeep as much as possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> that is too funny. Hmm. Uh, what about? I guess card games. Um, are they still like considered board games or are they separate? I don't know. But uh, have you heard of the the card game herbs or whatever? Like you're uh, like trying to raise herbs. <laughs> that sounds really I'm not weird. Like mm. So like that's the only like card slash board game that I know of. Um, yeah. It was it was interesting. Like it wasn't anything like crazy. Like no, I don't think it required any like deception or anything. You just try to um, like raise as many as you can or something. So just a really chill card game. Um, do you have any? Like, That's cool. That's yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. The I remember the art being pretty nice. Um, I could be remembering the name completely wrong, but yeah, there was something like that. Um, do you have any like favorite card games? Well, yeah. any and yeah, so like definitely card games can be board games. It kind of mm. just depends on like, like I guess the style of game or whatever. Mm. Usually, you like to consider a game that actually has a board, like mm. a board game. So if, okay. it's, if it's like a mainly a card game, but there is a board, you could probably consider it a board okay. game too. Um, so like card style okay. games or card style board games. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have to think. Mm. Um, I, there's definitely some I play. Mm. One that's less, I guess, card gamey. I've played a ton. Doesn't mean I love it, but I've played a ton of it. It'd be mm. like Catan, basically. There's mm. like a lot of cards involved in Catan. Mm-hmm. It's like a, a pretty basic board slash card game. Mm. Uh, a lot of new people to, to board games play. Mm. Um, my card game is Yu Gi Oh, which Yu-Gi-Oh. as a card game is an absolute mess. Yeah, I played Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> Played Yu Gi Oh way back in the day, and then I, I got back into it. Mm. Um, Yu Gi Oh, Yu Gi Oh is so it, it's tough. I, I I just hate like you get a card and it's like a wall of text and it's like oh, man, <laughs> I don't know. Just but yeah, Yu Gi Oh is tough. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's funny it'll be a wall of text and like the, the card will actually in the game you know it, it might do it might do a lot of things but a lot of times it'll be like a couple things mm-hmm. and so like this wall of text is just rules or whatever so mm-hmm. it's yeah but yeah you guys one thing um yeah other like card it's a tough one yeah, I, yeah. off the top of my head i can't even remember many like yeah. card based board games that i play well mm-hmm. actually so there's one so mm. we, uh, a couple days ago a couple weeks ago, like or last week, I don't remember. Mm-hmm. A bad memory. We talked about D and D in your chat. Oh yeah, we did. So yeah, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of my all time favorites. This is like a super super basic. I I would honestly probably I probably should do this more. It's it's a, it's a really good gateway into D and D. It's called Munchkin. Munchkin. It's, it's like almost entirely a card game, except there's sometimes there's a board that you can use to like track levels. Mm. But what well, Munchkin is, it's basically a super boiled down version of D and D combat. Interesting. And um. You all have your little characters, and throughout playing the game, you like battle monsters, gain levels, mm. gain like treasure cards, which will 
be like pieces of armor you can equip or like weapons and stuff like that it's it's super fun little uh-huh. card game um th- these style of card games you might usually call like deck building games uh... um maybe less not so munchkin but th- there's like the general like board game mm. trope of like of like deck building kind of games mm, i don't sense. usually play too many of them mm. but Munch- munchkin's an amazing one mm. yeah, that sounds that sounds interesting <laughs> yeah i do remember talking about dnd briefly <laughs> Yeah. Uh, who, who are we talking about D&D with? Um, there was someone here who specifically said like they don't understand the appeal of D&D and that's how we started talking about it. Cannot, I, I cannot I remember off the top of it. Oh, it was you, Proxy! Oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> My previous housemates have a house full of board card games and they would invite me to their board game and then I- <laughs> I have three games. <laughs> no, no. no, I think like I guess the challenge with these like board and card games is that if you're not used to playing these, um, like learning the rules can be a little overwhelming at first because you know you're totally new to this and you're having like all these different rules like thrown at you. So yeah, we can definitely yeah. 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 <laughs> absolutely like yeah. like like if you're if you're new to board games yeah. and, and and you you meet like a board game group and you guys start playing board games together mm-hmm. what's probably going to happen is every time you meet there's going to be a new board game and yeah, you have to learn sure. new rules every single time uh-huh. and that can be really really difficult like yeah. it, it is honestly way easier for people it, i mean in learning board games learning anything is kind of i, I kind of like uh i kind of like um use an analogy it's like learning a language so like mm. you learn a language you, you you practice language a ton of times right, super right, super right. well and every time you learn a new language mm-hmm. it helps you mm. uh, like understanding structures and everything of, of learning the next language yeah, yeah. But just like board games the more you you work on learning a board game the more you learn how like rules are set up and stuff yeah you, you'll find like like general tropes and ideas right, and concepts right. and, and rules across basically all games so mm-hmm. learning like 10 games will help you learn pretty much every game after mm-hmm. that so right. it definitely is just like it's just like a skill set of like learning yeah. how to learn specifically board games yeah. yeah for sure for sure it's just more learning yeah for, learning yeah curve, for, for sure, sure. Yeah. yeah because like i mean i mean i'm sure each board game is unique but uh i mean you can only do so much with board games, right? So I'm sure there is a structure that a lot of games, like board games follow. So I guess if you learn yeah, like 10, sure. you'll probably get the hang of like all these other games too. But once yeah. you get it, it's the fun part. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see. Mm-mm-mm. So I'm just gonna look at our cheat sheet. Let's see. <laughs> Uh, well, we already talked about a lot of these. Um, I mean, it's like how, how people who never played a console. Mm. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because like, I've been playing video games for the longest time since I was a little kid. So when I read that, I was like, wait, what? But then I guess. Yeah, it's that's only because like I'm used to it. So if you're used to it, it's nothing to you. But if you're not used to it, there is definitely a learning curve for sure. The Stardew incident, <laughs> which incident? There we have so many Stardew incidents. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> how I don't care about that game. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I don't know if that's what he's talking about. But <laughs> something like that, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Like, at this point, I'm just, like, clicking on whatever. I don't even care about doing any of the quests. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I remember playing a Dark Souls board game. A Dark Souls board game. That's interesting. <laughs> Once you got the hang of it, everybody died. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, man. Uh <laughs> You could always just play it by yourself. <laughs> it's <laughs> sounds... that's tough though because that's like if true. you're gonna play by yourself, you're probably gonna want to already like board games. Yeah. Otherwise, you're gonna be bored. And that's, give true. Up. <laughs> that's true. That's <laughs> true. Hi, Digo. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, another mathematician actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. So yeah, Digo, we were just talking about <laughs> board games. <laughs> Board games, yeah. <laughs> Our friend Satan also has a background in math. 
<laughs> yes, yes, like you. <laughs> Board games. Um, Board game, that's right. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's a lie when I say I've never really played board games because, like, when I was, like, little, like, really little, like, elementary school little, um, I used to play, like, random board games by myself. Remember, I, I know I've, I've told you guys about this about four times already, but, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I would pretend like I was, uh, four different people <laughs> and just, yeah, nice. play board games. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember what they were. Like, I don't remember the names or anything. Oh, a question for you. Did you have a focus for your studies? Yes, so I, I, I've kind of done a lot of math adjacent things. I started doing physics at a, at a, a school that's really bad to start doing physics at. <laughs> and um, that kind of pushed me into just like, in just like pure math. And then I got my associates in math and I started teaching a little bit. And uh, I decided I didn't really want to do like <laughs> teaching younger people math. So um, I, I, I went, I'm going back to school now and I'm doing data science specifically now. So I guess if I had to say broadly, my focus is math like statistics. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, yeah. Yeah, like. Coming, coming from a literature background, like all this like physics and math, 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 math mathematics talk, uh, they're, yeah, they're really, they're really cool because it's something I don't know or I'm not familiar with. <laughs> physics too pure, <laughs> exact like opposite. Oh, did you, you start in pure maths and then go physics? Ooh. Well, so Digo, I, I think you're from California, right? I went to Santa Barbara, UC Santa Barbara and I mean, it's it's like a physics school, but it, it was, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure it's, sure it's doable, but for one, it's already on the quarter system, which is like way faster than the semester system. And it was just like really tough classes. So I was like, all right. Um. And then on top of that, if I want to start doing a, if I want to start doing like research and stuff, I got to like start rubbing shoulders with these like old fucking white dudes. And I just, I couldn't handle it. <laughs> and the teaching st and stats literally hit the four main math topics through teaching stats applied. I'm <laughs> down at CSU and oh yeah, nice, nice. That's so funny. Like, I love how we all have, like, common interests or backgrounds here. Like, we're all, like, different people, but we all have, like, some kind of connection. It's so interesting. It's, like, yeah, either sure. physics, art, or <laughs> math, or teaching. <laughs> That's so yeah. funny. Um, so, I guess, I guess I have a question for you, then. Would you ever consider teaching adults did you just hate teaching because you were teaching kids or are you just not a not not a uh, not an instructor type um it, it's tough so <laughs> naturally and i'm i'm slowing down it now and, and i'm having to think so i'm talking slower mm. now but that talk really fast mm -mm -mm. and it's difficult mm. to always control that and <laughs> and while while teaching i'll always remember it. so specifically i was um <laughs> so i was doing i was teaching during um the pandemic mm. and it was like after school stuff and i had i had all age ranges so I, like i taught second graders i oh. taught all the way up to like college students oh, who I taught okay. statistics too and then even oh, further I, I, I had a couple students who were like they were like what, like forties, fifties, sixties. They were just going back oh. to get their um, GE or whatever. Uh, and so I was teaching them just like basic, uh, similar stuff I was teaching the kids. So I've taught kind of all age ranges, uh, I see, I see. age ranges, and mm. and you know, the, kind of the reason I wanted to teach in the first place was because I just had some amazing teachers in high school that really mm. inspired me. And so mm. I, I kind of always wanted to, to go in that direction, anyways. Mm -hmm. um, but I, um, you know, and I, I could, I think I always could go back to it. Mm. Um, I had some teacher friends mm. and. Oh, the, the the big thing that's keeping me away from just just going straight to to teaching is mm -hmm. when I hate academics. I mean, I'm trying my hardest <laughs> to get out right now. Yeah. Too, the kind of the reason I hate academics is because yeah. it comes with so much bureaucracy. Like I just hate yeah. like the interpersonal yeah. workings of having to deal with the other teachers and the yeah, principal yeah. and all their dumb rules and For the counties sure. and then this and that. So like yeah, just the yeah. the bureaucracy of academia just uh -huh. really does not interest me like, uh -huh. at all. For sure. For sure. Uh, yeah, you know, like, um, I totally understand that because, like, I was actually going to, going to teaching too, um, like, I was going to take the, the professor route, 
um, after college. But then like that, seeing all that really like tired me out. So I was like, yeah, no, this is probably not for me. So I like deviated from that after graduating. So <laughs> yeah, I totally relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. It's too much. Yeah. All the crap you have to do. <laughs> Do that teaching with a lot of teaching, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I, you know, teaching stuff. These they hate school the most. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely see it. Um, I can see that too. Oh my gosh. You teaching teaching like elementary school is rough because like it's basically just um it's basically babysitting. Uh -huh. But middle schoolers, it's at a point where like they're learning complicated enough stuff, so where mm -hmm. it shouldn't be babysitting, mm -hmm. but they, they don't give a shit. So it no. is just babysitting still. It's right. like oh man. Right, right. Oh man, truly is hell. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you teach high school students. Oh man, even even that sounds like a lot. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I'm stupid. <laughs> I just make their lives easier. <laughs> Very large toddlers to get into fights. So yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Although adults can be like that too. <laughs> it's not just like kids in school, unfortunately. Oh. Dude, okay, so th there was like a crazy Texas moment I had. Oh, yeah. So I was at a facility called Mathnasium, okay? And uh -huh. generally, Mathnasiums have, they're like, they're like second grade to like, I don't know, like fifth, mm. sixth, seventh, eighth grade, depending on the one. But my, mine accepted all ages. So I, like mm. I said, I did like high schoolers, colleges, um, uh, like even like people outside of school. Mm -hmm. And um, we had a high schooler come in, and I'm, I'm like six foot, I'm, I'm like kind of a big guy. This this dude was like a freshman or sophomore in high school, and he, he like towered over me, both <laughs> and, and weight. And I, and I was, and he, and he was, he was a problem kid. And I was, I was supposed to be the one to keep it in check because the only people who worked here were my manager, who was like this tiny little Asian woman, <laughs> and me. And I, I'm like, I'm, I'm big, but I'm like skinny. So like, and he, and he, like, me and him, like, like face to face sometimes, and I'm like, I, I don't want to deal with this. Like, I'm no. going to get the shit beat out of me. Like, no. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, God. Like, Texas moment right there, dude. I don't Texas know. moment. The I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really put in the fucking water or whatever, but that is <laughs> some big freaking kids out there, dude. No, for real. Like, <laughs> like I I remember telling you guys about this, like, maybe once or twice. Like, these days, there, there must be something in the water or in the air because kids are so fucking big. <laughs> like, you know, I'm pretty short myself. Like, when I was little... I wasn't that short. I was like average, but now I'm like short because the kids are so big. I'm like, what is in the water? Like, what is in the air? Honestly, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Something the baby Something formula. The <laughs> I missed out. I, I mean, I'm like kind of tall, but I, I could, hey, I could be bigger, man. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, what's I stopping us from eating some right now to get taller? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, honestly, though, I wouldn't be surprised if there really was something in the formula. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, the the shit they put in like all the processed foods these days. I mean, you can say you can GMOs, tell me. Yeah, you can tell me like baby formula is like pure and everything, but no, if it's like manufactured somewhere, it is no way <laughs> pure, you know. But yeah. yeah for yeah, <laughs> the things we talk about. <laughs> uh, oh, I feel like we have more people watching than we, we did in the beginning. Um, should we show off uh, our, or not our, your, your bot one more time? <laughs> well, well, actually, it's your, I, I just made it for you. No, so, no, no. Yeah, we could, yeah, so. You are the creator. So I, like a couple, uh, a couple weeks ago, I reached out to Rin with a proposition <laughs> to make them a, like a Twitch bot. I have a little bit of experience using similar, um, like API wrappers and stuff for like Discord bots and stuff. So I was kind of familiar with it. And uh, I just slapped something together in a couple weeks that kind of works. Hopefully it doesn't break <laughs> on us in the middle of this, but uh, we were doing it a little bit earlier. There we can see. I got like some silly commands, <laughs> so I can do like question Ooh. mark love, and then anything you can say any name, and then like there's 64, but just a random number, 64 percent love between me and Ropusuke. And then there's less silly features, like we have um, a bunch of just like uh, like I guess uh, like text commands. So you can see if you do, like con info, you can see Rin's upcoming con stuff, and then also there's like socials, so you can see Rin's upcoming like uh, or not upcoming Rin's like social accounts and stuff. If, uh, oh, because there's a cooldown, I think. Ooh. 10 seconds. Mm. Try it again. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I, how cool so, is yep. that? <laughs> 
Yeah, like, I, I have some other ideas mm -hmm. to, to add and stuff, but for now, this is this is the what I cobbled together. So. Yeah, so neat. Like, um, if you guys weren't here in the beginning, you guys should definitely try the question mark love Ropusuke. <laughs> <It's laughs> see, see if you yeah. see how pure your love is with yeah. Ropusuke. <laughs> Question from Digo. Now, would that be a question for me? Are you using Streamlabs chatbot as the backbone? No, I don't. I don't. I, 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 I'm pretty new to like the Twitch stuff. So what I'm using is there is a, a Twitch API wrapper for like how, how Twitch structures their bot stuff called Twitch IO. And I just, I, I wrote from scratch, just like a Python Twitch bot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> No, oh, no, 4%. 4%. Oh. oh no, <laughs> oh no, oh my gosh, <laughs> only 4% no. between me and Brie, no, <laughs> that's so sad, but it was 70% for Ropusuke, <laughs> yeah. this is so cute, let's see, um, I know, it's so sad, oh, no. young Brie, man, I don't know, <laughs> Oh no, only 46%! <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, yes, I, I love this feature. It's so cute. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's interesting. I'll, I'll look into that for sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just nodding my head over here. Uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, this is like such a cute little command. Just gonna spam my bird one over here. Ah, uh, let's see. Oh no, what is wrong with <laughs> Okay, no more for today. <laughs> I, I do kind of feel like, I mean, I didn't use anything crazy to do like the random number generation, mm -hmm. but I do feel like it, it, it tends to favor like really low numbers. <laughs> maybe I can look at that. But it, I mean, it should be like a uniform distribution. I don't know. Yeah. Well, maybe. Maybe Ropusuke in, in this bot form is a little gatekeepy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <yeah. laughs> Maybe. Uh, it's too funny. But yes, this is like such a cute feature. Um, yeah, sure. yeah. I know we can always like talk about this offline, but like what other features would you like be interested in adding? Because like, I have no idea. <laughs> So I am also still like learning what I can even do with Twitch. Again, I, I don't really, I mean, I'm not a super like Twitch watcher. I, all my streams I usually watch on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't even know what, and I, I read through the documentation. I'm finding some kind of, some kind of interesting things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'd have to, have to do more research for right. sure. A lot of like, I have a lot of ideas for like some little key ones kind of like love, mm -hmm. but, uh, but nothing super concrete, mm -hmm. concrete yet. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, uh yeah. it's not super important yet but there's a lot of like auto modding kind of features that the bot can do and already does have one so i can mm -hmm. i can pull this up like i can i can show showcase one thing so we have like a and again like, like digo so there's probably you know definitely easier ways uh to have this done mm -hmm. so like using the streamlabs streamlabs chatbot as like a backbone i could probably do stuff a little bit easier but um mm -hmm. at the moment i have like a super s simple filter on with the bot with some like kyber parameters so i can pull that up on my alt account, I can do, so I have a specific, only one word right now, it's actually blacklisted. <laughs> um, let, me, let me pull up what the word actually is. It's something that people won't usually type anyways, it has a bunch of like underscores in it, but mm. uh, let me go to your stream. Mm -hmm. Rene Kanzaki. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'll I'll type this in. Hopefully this works. I'm mm, not just gonna we'll embarrass see. myself. No, <laughs> I should be typing something on my alt no. account, and the alt account should get immediately timed out. We'll see if that works. I'm gonna get banned. <laughs> gonna get banned. Yeah. <laughs> okay, who wants yeah, so to get this banned? This is what it should be. <laughs> I type it, and it gets immediately timed out. Yeah. Uh huh. So and. And and then I, I can like Damn. I have other commands that I've added so like on the fly we can just do like a uh, question mark and this only works for like mod or broadcast. We're gonna question mark ban word any word and I can mm -hmm. ban it immediately and then remove it the same way. That is so cool. Like it is so cool. <laughs> we, hmm. So we could get just random people banned by putting random words in 100%, the yeah. the banned. <laughs> 
database. Like the trap card. People knew people of the stream. They have no idea. Books is banned. So if books someone is banned. comes in, and we're talking about like libraries and stuff like, oh, I love books, and they just instantly they're banned. banned. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure some of the stuff you could even do with like the tw like Twitch has its own like mm, automated stuff. I looked right, into right. a tiny bit, and you could probably do a lot of this stuff. Mm. Um, I'm with it, but this is kind of like a learning experience for me yeah. too to see like what what I can do, what's even necessary, this or that. So mm. yeah. I love it. It's so cool. <laughs> it's like, what can we add to get people banned? <laughs> that is just so cool. Uh, let's see. I, I guess... Hmm, anything that you wish you could add, but I feel like hit a limitation on Okay, hit a limitation. Mm. Well, uh, if Good you were question. here earlier, we talked about, I want to construct, like, so my major, um, my focus is, like, data science and, and, like, AI, machine learning, deep learning, stuff like that. So my, my uh, like, short-term end goal is to make some kind of brain mm -hmm. that kind of, like, mimics, um, like, some kind of collective, uh, natural way people talk and have, like, you know, different instances of the bot on different bots. Like, I have a Discord bot, I have the Twitch bot pick up how people generally talk in the mm -hmm. server and then, you know, kind of synthesize its own <laughs> messages, its own ideas and thoughts and just kind of send them out there in the chat or on mm -hmm. a stream or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that that's definitely something that, you know, outside of just computer science, that's more of like a data science thing that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm kind of limited on at the moment. Mm -hmm. That's definitely one. Um, oh. I don't know. I, I don't know what I feel like I'm currently like limited by necessarily. Mm -hmm. but at the moment, uh, most, you know, most things that I've noticed that most streamers even use these bots for in the first place is a lot of just like, uh, you know, the prefix in our case, it's a, it's a question mark. And then some, some word like, mm -hmm. uh, it could be like, um, like, let's say you're, you're playing, like you're like a squad up in like a game of Valorant or whatever. It's like a team game. Mm -hmm. You could do like question mark squad and you know, like say who you're playing with right now. Like a lot, a lot of the commands seem mm -hmm. to be like, Oh, you input some certain prefix and it gives you some other like text or string output. Mm -hmm. So and we already have the, the infrastructure for that. You can just do question mark set, space, whatever you want to call the command, and then whatever you want the command to say, and just do it on the fly in the chat. Um, so I, I, need, I, need, I need to like look into what actually uh, <laughs> cracked or invalid. <laughs> I, need, I need to look into more what people use their bots for. I'm sure a lot of it is like back and kind of like moderation stuff. But, uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. I know. So I, I, there are some I've looked. Some like Nightbot and Fossabot are two mm. like free ones you can get, mm. and you can actually look up like Fossabot and then like some streamers. So a streamer I watch is like Ryan Higa, mm. so I could do like Fossabot and then it's Ryan Higa, which is his Twitch handle, mm. and you can see some of the commands he actually has on his bot and what they do. So mm. I'll definitely be doing this and like seeing what people use their bots for mm. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I've seen the Nightbot. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I should watch more streams too because I only watch literally like three people maybe. <laughs> so yeah, maybe I should like jump on some random streams and see what kind of uh, commands they're using. Because like right now I'm like, what other commands could we do? Hmm. But I'm I'm just a super fan of the the silly the silly ones the cute ones. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, gonna be recording. <laughs> gonna be recording all our words. <laughs> yes, Even I'm more. I'm all your information right now. I'm gonna sell it to Google. I'm gonna I'm gonna make so much money, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny! Oh my gosh! Um, you know it would be cool if. Ropuski can like do the um, natural language processing or or whatever it's properly call called and then like um, just randomly say something in the chat and like if whatever he says gets highlighted I feel like that could be pretty funny yeah, if he sure. says anything funny that is but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> he has all the data <laughs> But literally though like i'm sure we're being watched all the time <laughs> yeah 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 i mean i don't know if you, I, 
I don't know if it's real, but it definitely mm. feels this way. So, like, you'll be talking with your friends on, like, a call, yeah, yeah, Discord yeah. call on the phone, whenever yeah, you're yeah, out yeah. and about doing whatever. You just say words and yeah, your phone's yeah, yeah. around. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you're on Instagram and you're uh -huh. getting ads of the shit you talked about. For like, it's sure. Crazy. For sure. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's actually listening, but uh -huh. it sure seems like it is. Right. Like, literally, it's happened to me, like, many, many times for me to believe that it is true. Because, like, what are the chances, you know? Like, what are the chances? <laughs> Totally. Oh my gosh. But I would give Rokuski all my data. I wouldn't mind giving him all my data. <laughs> You'll let him farm all your data, nice. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> mm. Faith too. <laughs> and the cookies. <laughs> and the cookies. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Would they really give us a way to disable it though? Like, would they be that well, kind well, to maybe. us? Well, maybe. They, they might, but what they do is they hide it behind like 10 mm. menus. So you'll, mm. not, you'll be, you'll try to find it once, you'll mm. get lazy, you won't find it, you'll never do it again. Cause like, yeah. you, cause to most people, like, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it affects your life yeah. immediately. So you're like, oh, I don't care. I'll just, you know, yeah. whatever. I, I give up. It's, it's too hard to find. Yeah. I, I mean, that's all I have really. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I guess unless you're doing something weird like something you don't want other people to know <laughs> there For sure, yeah. yeah really isn't a great immediate harm to it but it just feels weird it just yeah just yeah you know privacy concern wise it's just a little weird <laughs> yeah, don't sure. remember the way of course <laughs> uh, yeah like um nothing like Maybe, maybe it's just me who feels like it is being moved around, but even for something that's simple as logging out of your current Apple ID and logging in with a different one, like, I feel like that option always changes places every time there is an update. Maybe it's just me not remembering where it is, but I feel like... I mean I feel like they change it around, like, every single time, um, even for something as simple as that, so it wouldn't... It wouldn't be... Yeah, it wouldn't be weird if they were to have an option to disable it, but like hidden behind like 20 walls. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. depends on how much you value privacy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, I am a private person, but like, I guess my phone listening to me talk about an Italian restaurant and sending me like Italian restaurant recommendations doesn't really, I guess harm me <laughs> like I, I do find it creepy oh. but then like at the end of the day it's just a restaurant so i don't know mm. so okay not not to get too like conspiracy theory <laughs> but you know and I, I was definitely like you are right now yeah, yeah. for a long time and to, and to be honest I, I don't i'm not super like i don't use a vpn all the time i'm not like super yeah, yeah. careful with my privacy mm -hmm. but i think there's a pretty compelling argument in that like ima imagine a world right where mm -hmm. Not to get too like doomer or <laughs> um, pessimistic or whatever, but yeah, yeah. We, we could imagine a world where a government be gets into power and then they they ban certain co topics that right now we consider totally normal. Like, I mean, Fahrenheit 451 books are bad, whatever, knowledge mm. bad, something mm. like that. Mm. If, you know, we kind of allow companies to, to farm this much information yeah. off of us. Yeah. Um, and and it, it's become the norm. Yeah. Once we open that floodgate, there's no closing it. Right, like there's, right. there's, there's almost no way to stop it because once the companies have the power to do stuff like that, mm -hmm. they're going to make a lot of money off of it and they're going to start lobbying the government to yeah. like never, never let this go. Yeah. And then the, the only step that has to happen is government's got to start paying uh, the, the corporations or whatever mm -hmm. to access to the data. And then yeah, all of a sudden, yeah. you know, if if some something that seems uh, like simple or, mm -hmm. or inoffensive now gets banned mm -hmm. in the future, all of a sudden they have instant access to all of our information and mm -hmm. everything that we do and say and, and stuff like that. So it's yeah, you know, yeah, for sure. It, yeah. it can be it can be scary. I, I still like you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm more of like a nihilist when it comes to like there's not much that there's not many individual actions I can take to actually prevent any of this. Mm, yeah, yeah, but for sure. But it is, it's, it's kind of a compelling argument, for <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally get that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, oh, and then, like, uh, as Deagle was saying, some like trading privacy for the convenience. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for and, sure. And, and that's, like, a, a very understandable trade-off, mm -hmm. for sure. <laughs> um, for me, I think it's, um, I'm okay with trading privacy for safety. Uh, like, 
convenience i don't i don't know but for safety like public safety um i would not mind trading my privacy I, although i know like a lot, of, a lot of people have opinions on that too um but yeah 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 <laughs> um yeah for example like i guess not to not to like get into like weird topics right here <laughs> but for example um i you know this is just an example like i would not mind the government like tracking everybody on their phones um if that means it'll help catch bad people like something like that you know like so like in, that's i guess what i mean by i wouldn't mind trading privacy for safety yeah for yeah. sure i mean I, I think like south korea had like the super super uh like um robust contact tracing uh ah, like during it... most like the COVID stuff yeah, right yeah, so yeah and th th there is definitely uh like examples of like governments already doing stuff like that yeah. so yeah it's, it's yeah. yeah for sure yeah for sure yeah is it worth tracking everyone's location to find one bad person? Yeah, it's a trade-off, right? Like, you have to... But there's, like, a... And I, I think this kind of comes with, like, organized governments in general. There's, like, a, there's like an amount of buy-in you, you kind of have to have or you, you would have to have in order to, you know, be okay with or, like, accept these kinds of uh, institutions, you know, doing these kind of things. Mm -hmm, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and I know, like, a lot of people have different, different like, opinions regarding this. Yeah, it is a hard answer. Uh, I do understand, like, some people would think, like, too much is too much, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Why have and, you... <laughs> and it seems, it seems off topic, right? But this is, like, this is kind of directly related to my, like, data science yeah. field, right? Because, so, I, I mean, there's the really big, um, and this is a little bit different, but there's, like, the really big scandal, I guess, right now with mm -hmm. the, the AIR and generation or generators taking all of the images mm -hmm. from Google that they can find that they have access to just because it's, it's easy and it's, it's basically mm -hmm. free to do it. Mm -hmm. And whether or not there's like a, like a breach of um, copyright or whatever mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And it's the yeah. same with, uh, you know, any kind of AI or any kind of scraper, you know, scraping all the public information that we, we just sign off on the, the EULAs or whatever and, and mm -hmm. give the corporations and start synthesizing, mm -hmm. um, things about the people and, and this and other like data and stuff mm -hmm. so it's yeah it's, it's, t it's tough like yeah. you know how, how much do you allow right you know, right the government to, to take information for sure stuff? for sure and then just to answer Diego's question is it worth checking everyone's location to find one bad person I think for me it's not finding the one bad person I think it's for me it's saving one person so it's saying the same thing but if it can save someone I I would not be opposed to it, but you know I know we have like different opinions, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Christian in general, I don't know. Uh, you know, like I've never really given it like much thought, so I don't know like how to answer in a good way, but. I do feel like <laughs> I know I know like there are so many layers to it and like it depends on like what they're doing with the data and all that crap but you know I don't know I feel like saving a person is very important but we yeah we can <laughs> we can save it for another day yeah it's <laughs> not lighthearted at all <laughs> yeah well, yeah later. yeah no I don't know just Cause when you do like watch stuff on the news, like how like a lot of people are. Okay, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, no, I don't want to say this. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, I don't want to talk we about can this. Right? Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's, it's, it's it's so multifaceted. Yeah. It's hard to. Yeah. There's so many things to consider and stuff. Yeah, so for sure, stuff. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I love how we came from Ropuski bot too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's tough if you're, if you're talking to me like this is my wheelhouse i love like bringing up super hard things yeah. to talk about and like, just yeah. like seeing what, what people say i just that's yeah. my favorite thing uh i yeah i don't mind like talking about these things like face to face with friends but maybe not like when we don't know yeah, everybody sure. that's here you know <laughs> yeah yeah i guess some things are better for private conversations yeah 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 because people do have different uh yeah 
opinions change of subject what let's does the see. love command mean do it and find out <laughs> let's see mm. it's just all love man yeah <laughs> let's see let's see mm, how can we change the topic <laughs> uh let's see so we it or oh <laughs> don't don't say that <laughs> There are 62% 60 love. love percent. Hey, that, that's, you know, in, in my head, I kind of imagine, um, and maybe, maybe this is bad, um, maybe this is bad <laughs> to say after the rolls people got earlier, but I kind of imagine that 50% is kind of like zero, and then below 50% is like is like negative love, you know <laughs> what I mean? And then above 50% is like actual love. Oh so hey, gosh. at least you're like in the positive love range, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. 70% love between you know, I retract what I said. It's all, you know, it's all love. It, it, there's no, there's no positive negative. It's all, it's all love. That is so funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, um, why don't I try this myself and see if it'll give me a different uh, result. Therapy and proxy. Oh, oh no, that's not what I wanted, but okay. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I actually could look into adding a way to just check love between two people. That's mm. definitely something I can do. Mm. So that, that's good that you checked that. So now, now I can look at adding <laughs> in the future. <laughs> How much do you feel like about yourself, regardless of the bot? Oh, oh. How would you answer that question? No, <laughs> How much do you feel? Yes. Question both of you. How much do you feel? like about yourself what i I'm, i don't i don't fully understand the question do you uh so like uh regardless of the percentages we got uh like how do you feel about yourself i guess like um uh, how feel much about. do you like yourself like how much do i like myself <laughs> <laughs> well we, we could get the press like, no, I'm <laughs> I, I i i'm i'm definitely someone who you know um I bring it back to D and D, right? Mm. So sometimes you're, you're gonna roll for your stats, and you're gonna get bad rolls, and and I, and it's it's really easy to to get a bad roll in life, and to feel and to just like feel really bad about it, and always like kind of come back to like, man, if only it wasn't like this. Mm. But I'm I'm someone who kind of just go, in, in all facets of like my personality, I kind of just go with the flow. Like, mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. this happened. All right, go next or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I, I I'm. I, I'm generally, I would say baseline, at least neutral, but pretty positive. Like, I, I, I'm definitely, like, yeah, for sure, like, pretty positive about myself, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so how about in percentage? <laughs> how much, sorry, how much you love yourself in percentage? Oh! Um, sorry, I guess helpful. it was... <laughs> Two percent. <laughs> you like the milk? Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> percentage. That's tough. I mean, I've got like seventy five. Seventy five. I like love a middle that. between fifty and hundred. Yeah. I love that. I feel like anything above Cozy. sixty percent is good. I think. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Um, let's see. Um, of course, there are a lot of things that I hope to change or improve on. Uh, but I do want to say. 83%. 83% for me. <laughs> Is there a specific reason for that number? Uh, I mean, it's, it seems like a, the right number. It's not like, it's not 90, but it's not below 80. <laughs> so 83%. Um, mm, I feel like, and as, and as I say that, it's not like I'm like, oh, I love myself. <laughs> it's, it's not like anything like that. Uh, I mean, I feel like everyone should think of themselves like this. Like, um, sure, there are things like we should always try to improve on, like change um, to be better, quote unquote better. Um, but at the same time, we should accept that we also have like good qualities and value those qualities. And, you know, um, yeah, for sure. Like, love yourself. Uh, okay, so the love yourself term. Um, Sometimes it gets me because I feel like I know I know that's not the meaning behind it, but sometimes I feel like um, 
it makes people be too self-centered. I feel like it should be something like love yourself, but love the people around you as well. Like don't just love yourself. You know, you should be nice to the people around you too. Something like that. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, just <laughs> just a random thought. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, they don't call me reduced fat for nothing. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, let's go. Two percent. Say zero percent. <laughs> Shh, don't summon. <laughs> I gotta be in self love. Well, that's not a super low rating. You know, that's not. That's, that's good, not. A, yeah. yeah, right. That's not an F or. You see, you know. I mean, it's it's kind of annoying, and I I guess to an extent it does mm -hmm. make sense going mm -hmm. back to hating academics. Mm -hmm. I feel I feel like um th there's like the my anime list effect where like you know every single show gets rated a seventy percent, and that and that that feels like the like like okay, it's just, it's just not bad, like it's, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But it's true, and I feel like academics kind of reinforce that because you get a scene, it's like whoa, you kind of fucked up, like, and then the C is seventy percent, mm -hmm. and and you have to get higher than that. Like mm -hmm. I, mean, I feel like fifty percent is not bad, it's sixty mm -hmm. percent okay, that's pretty good. Seventy percent, mm -hmm. like yeah, okay, mm -hmm. and maybe it has to do with like how things are graded generally, anyways. Yeah. But I think um I, th I think yeah, like fifty percent is not a bad starting point. I mean, mm -hmm. at least it's you know. Yeah, at least know. it's fifty, right? <laughs> it's fifty, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's sixty, like, hey, you're, yeah. but you're all over half. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, <laughs> no, I won't get into that. But yeah, I don't know. know. Feel bad. Yeah, for sure. The Kanye and Ye, yeah, two hundred six percent true. <laughs> Kanye and Ye. Oh my gosh, just <laughs> the chat sometimes <laughs> it cracks me up. <laughs> uh... Mm, yeah um uh, yeah and you guys if you guys like if everyone else just wants to um type in the chat like like their percentage like please do like i'm, I'm curious to know like i hope nobody says like zero percent <laughs> or anything below like 20. negative <laughs> yeah or negative yeah yeah yeah, I mean, sure, there are like shittiest people out there, <laughs> um, but I mean, most people, I feel like, uh, have you know, some good qualities, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope so. I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. Reco, thirty eight percent. Dang, oh, fake, fake damn. Reco fan. You're it not is. I'm not rocking. Not not reckoning. Reco said. Let me do it. <gasps> dang, that's pretty damn. good. Seventy seven percent. Hey, that's like that's like. <laughs> That's a lucky number right there. Seven that and is, seven? Yeah, seven and seven. <laughs> oh my gosh. 87. 87. Mm. Very good, very good. Very good. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's weird for me because like, it's not like I'm like some like conceited person that's like super confident, but at the same time, like. I guess I am also confident. I don't know. It's it's weird. I guess it's, it it comes back to the contradiction thing that I was talking about. Like I always feel like I have two sides to everything. Like it's interesting. It's weird, but I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, generally, like it's kind of like the, uh, the the seven sins or whatever. Like a, a little a little bit of each is like not bad. It's good. Yeah. It's just like in when you when you get too much of one specific yeah. kind of like you know, sin or whatever, you start yeah. getting in probably negative territories, but yeah. like having like I mean, confidence and, and conceits generally like is, is not bad. It's just mm -hmm. when you're totally self-centered is when it becomes a problem. Yeah. yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And even like, I so, someone... <laughs> and even, even, even too much of a good thing can be too much. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Please give me 1%. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Holy, Holy shit! shit. Holy shit! Dude, that's crazy. Damn. That's that's actually crazy. <laughs> we see that is actually crazy. <laughs> Elliot, you are a oh genius. Ropuski and I synced. <laughs> I have the code base pulled up, and I I just rigged that. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, gosh. <laughs> Rigged, yeah. I just, I was, I just rigged in the bedroom. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> that is so like, crazy. You called it one percent. Damn, <laughs> that is so cool. Oh my gosh, can't be overcome. Yeah, that's the biggest value. Yeah. <laughs> Hard coded. <laughs> so one percent. 
<laughs> Too funny. Um, you know, you know, Deagle makes a good point. Like, uh, you can't be, um, uh, can't be, uh, come on, wait a second. Can't be overconfident if you have the skills to back it up. Um, I actually love okay. it when people that are super like skillful know that they're skillful and they're like super confident about it and they just they're not humble about it or like somebody that's like very good looking and they know it and they're not humble about it like i love people like that like they know what's yeah for yeah sure. I, I, I just love it like <laughs> i mean humble is good too i guess but if you have something to back it up like why be humble you have it <laughs> you know yeah for sure yeah <laughs> oh there was a good question did you read that question no Sam? Uh, do you feel like you would say that you're a good person one? Question for both. Mm, do you want to go first or should I go first? You should go first. You, should I go first? Uh, mm, I guess there, it, there, there can be like many, many, many connotations when it comes to the word good. Uh, because... Because I know I'm not a criminal. <laughs> because I know I don't do bad things. I do feel like that does make me a good person. Um, uh, but I do feel like I do have like you know I'm no angel. I have like my own faults, and I know it. Um, uh, so I want to say I feel like I'm an okay person working towards being good. Because as do as I do get older, I do want to be kinder to people. Although I hate people. <laughs> um. <laughs> Not that I'm like rude to people right now or anything, yeah, first but time. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Mook, uh, was your um, was your, was your answer was that that's how the, uh, the feel like you're a good person question? Because that's kind of my answer, but basically, mm. I I kind of think there's like no good people. So my like I guess I have like this like this like general like uh like like um ethics i guess of mm. we all like exist in a society and there are certain binds in the society and what i think i mean what a lot of people would probably consider a good person to be like they don't they don't commit crimes they don't you know they aren't rude or whatever they aren't this they aren't that i feel like these are all like binds to like mm. have a society function mm. um at, at least you need like at least a certain percent of you know uh, participants in a society to to mm -hmm. to do these things in order to like have a, an actually functioning society. So I don't I don't think in, in my framework at least mm -hmm. that can that like makes you a good person. Mm -hmm. I feel like and like and if you want to you you can say there are good people, but it's only going to be kind of like Hamuk says. There's like certain situations that will happen, and and there there are like I guess you maybe you could kind of consider like actions they like, take in a situation that could be considered good or mm -hmm. or bad or whatever like mm -hmm. generally, but. Yeah, I would start, definitely say, like, situational based. Like, I wouldn't say I'm a good person because I do good things or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if if a situation happens where I feel inclined to do a good thing, I will. Mm -hmm. um, and I try to, I do my best to participate um, appropriately in society. I don't commit crimes or whatever. Right. So if that makes me a good person, sure. But, I, like, I, I wouldn't consider myself, like, a good person. as like a term or as, like, or as, like, a... Or like a, a moral system, like, I'm good, so I do good things or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Me, yeah, I feel like... I feel like, you know, our answers are similar. Maybe we shouldn't trust people that say, yes, I'm a good person. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Because, like, I, there's this... Like anything, there are so many layers to the word good, and it's just hard to say... Yes, I am a good person. Because, like, what do you mean by that? You know. Well, and it super depends on the context, right? Context so, too. You know, are they? Is it someone that bridge brings up to like, hey, you know, mm -hmm. where do we just met? I just want to let you know that I'm a good person. Like, mm -hmm. I do good things. Like, mm -hmm. why the fuck are you telling me this? Yeah. But if it's like, if it comes up naturally, like, mm -hmm. you know, would you like if I'm asking you in like a personal conversation, would you consider mm -hmm. yourself a good person? Then mm -hmm. it's probably more appropriate to say so. But yeah, yeah it's, it definitely depends like when it's yeah. being brought up. Also, it depends on the person too, not just situations, like the people, because like. I know I can be a shady person to this person, but be considered a good person to this person. So, hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just many, many layers to it. Let's see. What are what? What is the chat saying now? <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> 
student A that says they did okay and now everyone else feels bad. I will admit I was kind of like student A when I was in school. I was like weirdly humble about everything but now I'm like whatever about everything. I just don't give a fuck anymore I guess. Um, Let's see. Uh, comparisons. Situation. Yes. The middle... <laughs> good person. <laughs> Morally so sound. <laughs> Proxy. He's love between <laughs> him and goodness. Dang. <laughs> Not good enough. I don't know. You should try, try being better, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it is how it is. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, I am not, I am not mean to that one person, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, what's a good, good word for this word in English? Um, it's just that I'm not very uh, compatible with some people. I will say that um, because yeah, I, because sure. I know like who I, what kind of people I am compatible with. So when I know that somebody's not someone in that group i'm like oh i don't know what to say oh i don't know what to do or something like that <laughs> drop into philosophical discussions on goodness and morality <laughs> yes um, i'm here for it yeah honestly like um yeah i mean if anyone wants to do we could even do like discussions in our server too just a, a community discussion party where we just fight over what's good and bad. <laughs> okay, so, so I, I did have this idea. Mm -hmm. So earlier when you got the 1%, mm -hmm. the, the idea started brewing. And I think, mm -hmm. I, I think I have like the formation of it now. Mm -hmm. So currently, mm -hmm. the love command, mm -hmm. it just it's just like a formatted string. And when, where that number is, it just, mm -hmm. it just generates a random number on yeah. the spot between 0 and 100, basically. Yeah. And I think it'd be sick if, yeah, if I somehow wrote an algorithm that took the two things being compared mm. and somehow made a number that every time you do it, it's consistent. And it, oh. it'd be funny because it'd be like more reflective. Because right now I could do love roles get three times, you get three different mm. answers, right? And then mm -hmm. pick one I like the best. But it'd be oh. funny if there was like an actual algorithm behind it. So oh. I, I might look into doing that next. That would be cool. <laughs> that is an idea. So we can save the 1%. <laughs> so... Oh, yeah, all oh, true. I guess I yeah. can hard code that one in. Don't worry. <laughs> Too funny. Oh, that was that was the best moment. <laughs> that, was, that was amazing. <laughs> uh, well, and, and it, it, as long as the algorithm is consistent, I wouldn't mm -hmm. even. I could save a text file. I have a couple mm -hmm. like JSON files where I store like some of the text commands and stuff. Mm -hmm. But as long as the algorithm was consistent, whether it's like based on the length of the two names being compared or the composition, like the, the ASCII, you know, coordinates of the, of the letters and the names or whatever, mm -hmm. some kind of algorithm that, you know, every time you do it, you will get a consistent answer. I think it'd be pretty funny. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, oh, sure. no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah. His name is a seed. Yeah, as a seed. And I, I, I guess, like, I could start with the parameter that... Rene Kanzaki and so have a have a one percent, and then build the <laughs> algorithm based on that one parameter. I, I mean, a couple of parameters I'll need, but I'll at least have that as one parameter for sure. So every mm -hmm. time we'll get that, it will be one percent. Be good. <laughs> Too cool. <laughs> oh man, let's see. What other questions can we can we answer? Uh, hmm. Well, you know, I do love that we are pretty much hitting the, the two topics that you submitted, you know, like, because, you know, at first you're like... Yeah, we somehow did, yeah. yeah. Like, it was, it was uh, data science and interpersonal yeah. relationships, and we got we kind of hit both. Yeah, we did. I'm so glad. Uh, I was just going to talk about data science, but yeah. I, I don't even know how it got brought up, but there you go. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's nice to have a chat that um, throws, like, all these questions at us. It's, it's fun. For sure. Yeah quick maths <laughs> oh my gosh like all these different suggestions very cool mm -hmm. okay well i know like we didn't go into like your labs and the codes that take 20 minutes to run and everything uh, so maybe this is a question that's like 
really random <laughs> but makes sense to us based on our conversation <laughs> um any manga recommendations like what are you reading these days because i'm very curious although i could ask you like offline but but for everyone okay so i guess just like a little bit of background mm -hmm. about about like my my tastes and stuff like that oh wait hold up before we before we switch to manga let's get one how much do you hate my lab and why is it a one yeah, so I was doing engineering classes in California, UCSB, and we had to use MATLAB, and I just, it's terrible, yeah, I hate MATLAB so much. <laughs> I, I like that I, I'm at, like, a relatively progressive school in terms of its academics, so, you know, my data science, I do just use Python, I don't, I don't have to use MATLAB, although some of my professors who I, who I work with a little bit, um, especially because, you know, there's different focuses of data science, and I, I'm part of the specifically math-focused data science so a lot of the professors use MATLAB, and it's just, yeah, as much as I can avoid it, MATLAB is so bad. I love how this is a question, what? but not a question. <laughs> yeah, yeah <that's> true. <laughs> but even worse than MATLAB, although, you know, I'm, I'm working with it a ton, and so I'm getting the hang of it. And I do know I've had, like, family in tech, and, and actually it's a skill they actually hire based off of, but there's another, like, similar language to MATLAB called uh, SAS, S-A-S, and uh, that one's also a pain in the ass for similar reasons. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the, the more you use it, the more you get used to it. So it's, mm. it's whatever. Like okay. language. <laughs> side angle side, yeah. Pretty much, pretty much. Um, Too but, uh, but manga. So <laughs> to give a little bit of context about, like, my taste and that kind of stuff. Mm. So I've been watching um, anime kind of on and off. I never, like, I started when I was, like, I don't know, 12 or 13 mm -hmm. watching, like, Oran High with, like, my sister on Konami or whatever the hell mm -hmm. we watched it on, and and just similar kind of shows. Um, but uh, so for the longest time, I, I was mostly just like really trashy stuff. So there's <laughs> one uh, there's one series that's horrible. And it's it's so bad, but it was called a. Uh, it's it's like the English title is "Is This a Zombie?" But the, I guess Japanese is "Korowa uh... Zombie Desuka," and that, that one's is. is <laughs> but that that just like a that's just like a like a general like th this was this was my taste for a super long time. It's, it's so super trashy. But um, nowadays, uh, I, I read a couple things. It's really hard for me to get into, like, a lot of things. I have so many, like, there's more things that I'm not into than I actually am into. Mm. And, and a big one is, like, a comedy, like, funny ha, -ha stuff. Uh -huh. Like, usually if, if, like, like, four comas in general, I just, I can't read it uh. out. But just, if a manga is too, like, this is a bunch of jokes, mm. I super can't handle it. But I, I, I will that. say, um, this is a shonen series mm -hmm. that uh, I, I, I started with like around the time when it was uh, first being serialized mm. and um i wasn't super into it because of the art style which is oh. funny because now i love it because mm. of the art style it's a don da don ah that it's, was it, getting it, it's animated. pretty juvenile but it is it's so <laughs> it's so fucking funny like mm -mm -mm. the art style is so good the characters are so good mm. again it's a very like surface level like juvenile kind of like shonen mm. action comedy stuff but that that series i love so much mm. like I, I look forward to that that's it's like my my weekly like i'm looking forward to this like this mm. keeps me going every week for sure mm -mm. um so that, that that's like and i don't read a lot of shonen i'm, I'm reading i read like the basic like chainsaw man and, mm. and this and that um there's one uh this is shonen yeah so so manga recommendations for one definitely uh uh, Dan Dan Dan. Another mm -hmm. shonen, I don't read many shonen, but another shonen I would recommend. It's by one of the editors, or not editors, I forget, like the, the manga assistants. No assistants. That who, of the person who wrote, um, or who, who, the mangaka of Soul Eater and Fire oh. Force. Mm. Um, their name is Kei Urana. Mm. Their, their series is Gachia, Gachia Kuta. This series is super, super badass. It has mm. a very similar style to like Soul Eater and Fire mm. Force, except... My biggest problem with those two is that they're like super, super fan servicey, and I just, uh -huh. I just don't care about that kind of stuff. <laughs> but this is like real interesting, like dark fantasy kind Ooh. of a kind of a vibe with a similar Ooh. style. So I, it's super cool. And Gachi Akuta, Ooh. super, super cool. Um, and yeah, wait, wait, did you say no four coma? Yeah, I cannot read four coma. <laughs> um, there, there's, there's some anime that I've liked that were based on four coma. Mm. So A Channel is one that I really liked. If Lucky Star, I really like mm. four coma, but I just, I can't read. Like, and the, the biggest problem is if, if I were to like start a four coma as it was like, you know, 10 or so chapters and I can like read weekly, then, it, or like, you know, four comas come out, sometimes come mm. out sooner. Then, then it makes more sense to me. But if I have to like binge through 200 chapters of four coma to get to like the recent stuff, it's going to take me 2 billion years. Mm. So but that's why I can't do four coma. Mm. Ooh, Asmanga Dio um, so was Dan, really good. True. 
yeah, that, that, yeah, I know it's good. a classic. I watched a little bit of the game, and I never read the manga. Mm, oh, same, actually, same. But the anime was really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh. Those two for sure. Mm. Um, oh, what's up? Oh, no, I was just gonna say, uh, speaking of, like, Azumanga, it's kind of similar, but more over the top as in, like, the premise is kind of crazy. Um, have you guys ever heard of this manga or anime, Nichijo? Um, like, yes, yes, yes. Just top, top. <laughs> it is so good, it's so funny. Uh, oh, the manga is funny, interesting. <clears throat> I should check it out. Yeah, this manga was a good one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yes, Nichijo. But yeah, Nichijo <laughs> is, is next level. So I, I watched that. I watched it first, and I watched it after I was kind of a fan of um, a, a different Nichijo series, with like the Daily Life of High School Boys. Mm. That that one was really funny when I was younger. Mm. And then when that came out, it was like a kind of similar premise of like wacky school stuff Yay. this time about like mostly girls and stuff. But mm. like Nichijo is is so good, yeah, mm. for sure. Uh, no, I it's on like Q or whatever you call it, but I still have not started reading that one. It looks good though. Which sure. way, homunculus? Yeah. I've never heard of that one. Um, should write everything down. <laughs> 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 yeah. Mm. Cool, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll check into this. Yeah, this cool. Oh, okay. Very curious then. I will have to actually start reading it. Like, there is like so much out there, you know? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. yeah, like so many good things, but I need to write that down. Okay, dun dun dun, and dun 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 is getting an anime next year, right? I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very cool. That's, that's super exciting. Yeah, have to um, start reading it too. There, <gasps> there, there is a cat like generally like 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 uh like boys love and girls love kind of stuff. Mm. I I do like. And then there's some that I've found that I like. So there's some that I read that when I was younger, but I, the, the more I think about it, the, the older I get, the more I like reflect on these mm. kind of things. I do, I do really feel like there's an issue with like boys love and girls love kind of stuff mm. in like Japanese media. It feels like oh. it's cool that there's like representation mm. of LGBT kind of like themes and ideas, mm. but so often it's like super fetishized or super sexualized. Mm. To the point where like it's like and like like when it's like high school kind of settings and it's mm. like you know there's already the problem of like the sexualization of like high, like younger people stuff in in, mm. in anime and, and manga in mm. general and, and you know that, that you can have whatever opinion you want about that mm. but i think it's a problem specifically with like boys love and girls love type stuff mm. because it feels like it's really saturated with like the fetishization stuff uh -huh. and that's just not a super accurate like representation of of, the, of these ideas mm. so I, to me that kind of rubs me the wrong way mm. there's some that i like despite that and there's some that i like that don't uh seem to do that but mm. it, yeah but for mm. that reason i don't typically go for anime and manga that i like that even though i do generally like um th those themes mm. mm -mm. yeah 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 that's the one um there's a movie too <laughs> <laughs> be a lover sweating over here <laughs> i mean hey I, I i love me some of that stuff too but it, it's just stuff out there you know um, i'm i'm like i mean i am a be a lover but i totally like i totally understand why why uh like why you what you're saying and why you would feel that because you know it is true <laughs> Yeah, 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 and it, it, it's it's not like the biggest deal in the world, and it's not something that like stops me like from reading pretty much any manga mm -hmm. that often. But it is like always in the back of my mind that like idea. Mm -hmm. and it's unfortunate, but you know, mm -hmm. it's, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very bad things about the movie adaptation. Most oh, no. Most adaptations tend to be bad unless it's um about like um. Uh, like salarymen or school kids in a normal school setting, unfortunately, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, yeah, unfortunately, the word fujoshi and like fudanshi have this negative connotation, I guess, because like they're like too much, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. They just fetishize like everything and they're like over the top. Uh, but if you just enjoy BL and understand like 
some of these issues. I guess that's the difference. <laughs> yeah, sure. I guess that is, yeah. Well, it is a sweaty mess, yeah. <laughs> it can be. <laughs> They can be. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's very weird for me, like... I really enjoy BL and GL, but it's hard for me to enjoy hetero romance for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. I understand that. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> I, I've been like this since I was little. Like, I've always thought I... Well, when I was little, I thought I hated, like, romantic comedies, like, romance. But then, like, when I first found out, like, BL existed, I was like, my eyes are open. <laughs> It's so <I> weird. <laughs> It's so weird. Um, anyway, moving on. <laughs> Stop revealing stuff about myself. <laughs> Any good games recently? Mm, Any good games? Does it have to be new games? Because mm. the answer to that is no. <laughs> yeah. I haven't started anything new, so... Um... Well, actually, actually, I do like some new games. Mm. So I, I don't usually play a whole lot of like, uh, like big story RPG open world like yeah. weird kind of games. I'm more of like a puzzle gamer. I like some like multiplayer online competitive kind of games. Mm -hmm. Played up the game out recently. It's like a little you know you have like your little kitchen and you're running mm -hmm. your little kitchen. That oh, frick! I mm -hmm. oh my god, I love that so much. Mm -hmm. Just like there's like a there's the game Overcooked. Uh -huh. That came out like a billion years ago, and Yay. it's like you and your friends, and it's so hectic, and you're your man, you're in kitchen. And this is like that, but there's more like persistence, and you get to keep your own little kitchen and work mm -hmm. on it through like a couple hour like gameplay sessions, and it's, oh, it's so good. So play it up a big one. I love, love that mm -hmm. game so much. It's very cute when I when I saw you play it. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. It's a cute little game. Yeah. Forever Dota and going through Binding of Isaac, oh, dude. I so. Mm -hmm. Me and my friends used to play Binding of Isaac in in high in like middle high school. I don't remember when it came out, but in the, the then the rebirth came out. We played a little bit of that too. But I have a friend who still plays that game, and he has like thousands of thousands of hours in it. And he only just barely after like probably like four thousand hours between both Binding of Isaac. He's just barely hundred percent the most recent Damn. Binding of Isaac like, uh, expansion or whatever. So mm. it's, that is a crazy game. People get fucking addicted to that game. Mm, crazy. <laughs> Um, for me, uh, I haven't really started anything new. Um, I mean, I'm just always forever playing like the games I have been playing for the past few years or how many years. Um, uh, so like SMT, <laughs> um, I, I guess your turn to die, not a video game, but I mean, is a new thing. I I've started playing recently somewhat, so I guess I'll say your turn to die. I am having uh, a great uh, time playing. That's with. a video game, isn't it? Uh, I don't know, like, um... Because, like, video games in Japanese are called, like, TV games because you play with consoles that connects to your... that connect to your TV. So sometimes I'm like, wait, are video games just console and, like, Portable system games or are computer games also considered video games? I don't know. I don't know the. <laughs> I don't know the That's distinction. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it, it is tough too. Because it's kind of like visual novel y and it is a pretty weird. Yeah, like they go. So it's kind of <laughs> different to distinguish visual novel and like actual yeah. like gameplay kind of games or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's distinguished VN and games? Well, I mean, visual novels yeah. can be games, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, because like even, uh, like Otome visual novels are called video games, so, you know. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, it was like Terebi game, you know, I was like, I guess games in general, so your turn to die, yeah. Uh, I mean, it is an indie game, so I do find some mechanics annoying, but, you know, what can you do? That's... it is what it is. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Other than that, it's literally forever, like, SMT games for me. Uh, 
Like for example, I just love wandering around the Amala labyrinth. <laughs> um, although you know there's nothing for me to do anymore, but it's, it's just fun. Just dungeon crawling. It's relaxing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> dungeon crawling can be very relaxing. It's tough because I guess I wasn't like super, super gamery mm -hmm. when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I didn't play a lot of games mm -hmm. and I'm not used to a lot of these mechanics. Mm -hmm. And I like SMT games. I like turn-based games mm -hmm. generally. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm kind of zoomer brained in that mm -hmm. like random encounters. Mm -hmm. Like I just, it just pissed me off so much. Uh... Like I hate just like walking around and all of a sudden I'm in a fight. <laughs> and I finish the fight because that's another fight. I'm like, bro, uh -huh. I just want to like look around. I don't even know where to go. I'm like, so this. I don't know what I'm doing. I got to fight everyone all the time. Mm -hmm. <sighs> It's terrible. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little zoomer brained because, again, I didn't play a whole lot of games. Mm. But, yeah, it's, it's, that's the hardest part for yeah. me with, like, dungeon crawling kind of games. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I'm sure it's... I enjoy it because I'm used to it, probably. If for I sure, yeah. yeah. If I were not a gamer and if I were to, like, get into those kind of games right now, I, I would probably be like, what the hell? <laughs> you know, yeah. like, why so many? <laughs> Yeah. It's it's and it's tough too because like some I feel like some turn based games do a little bit better now too like like the Dragon Quest games and mm. stuff like the newer ones especially where mm. you either have uh, random encounters or you can just like see the monsters and walk up to them mm -hmm. or whatever so and that, that's what I got more used to because I started playing like Dragon Quest eleven oh, and ten and stuff like that so I and then going back to older games like oh man I, I, every step I take I'm like <laughs> oh frick. Uh, loading screen yeah that mm. that especially so recently one of my favorite. Uh, Final Fantasy games for like the story was Final Fantasy VIII, mm. but going in between battles in Final Fantasy VIII, between all the all the tons of encounters, and then the, you get there like da, 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 and like the, all this and it takes mm. so long and yeah, oh, I hate how it adds up over time. <laughs> Interesting. Being unable to skip, um, like skill animations or attack animations, um. Do annoy me, but like the random encounter loading screen doesn't bother me too much. Probably because I'm used to it. Yeah. Maybe. It's, it's yeah, true. it's weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Outside of like they're trying to make you pick certain things in order to advance the game does does get a little annoying. Um, but outside of that, it's it's been great. It's a great game. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Starting and ending. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it can be for sure. Yeah. Okay. So I guess question for uh, you, Elliot, and the chat. Uh, do you think like a two-hour session is good enough for this radio? Uh, content or do you think it's too long or too short? I'm trying to like gauge what's the right time frame for for this. It 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 is super tough. Um, it, I think it will definitely depend on like what people are like feel comfortable with. I, mm -hmm. I feel like two. I feel like two hours generally is like. I feel like a lot of people use it in like mm -hmm. their podcasts, their radio stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's not bad. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it could be tough for some people to talk mm -hmm. for two hours. It could be not. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know how everyone feels. <laughs> I definitely can go two, three hours, four hours easy and, and just sit here and talk. Yeah. My freaking mouth will never stop. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I feel like two hours is pretty good. Yeah. You always feel standard. Okay. Because I don't want to yeah, tire so. you out. I don't want to tire, I guess, other people out. Because uh, I'm like, whatever, whatever, you know? <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Mm, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because like I'm good because this it's like my channel, but I don't want to bother. I guess like the guests and the people here <laughs> can be like a Netflix episode. Netflix episode where it can be uh, yeah. until topics die. It's kind of hard for topics to die when you. Or having a conversation and you get like questions thrown at you at the same time because you always have something to talk about <laughs> yeah yeah well yeah, yeah sure. not like brandon just said it, yeah. definitely if you want and if people feel like they need it you could like beforehand be like hey you know are you comfortable with this length it's mm -hmm. a little less you know right. okay or whatever or do, right. would you prefer a little less or whatever right. so yeah it's right. maybe a little flexible i guess yeah i did write on the information sheet that um it's probably gonna be like between one to three hours 
Uh, yeah. If they read it, I'm sure they know <laughs> what they are signing yeah, up you're, for. You're assuming a lot. I don't know. I don't know how to read. So I, I, I'm assuming most people don't know how to read. Either, so. <laughs> oh yeah, I for sure know one person did not read it at all. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> Whoa! I hope they're not here. No, <laughs> I don't think. I don't think I so. You have text to speech. Text to speech, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I'm I guess just... really, really quickly, we, we, yeah. we can end soon, but um, I wanted to answer, I guess, D D goes, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to try now. Diego's last question was, Final Fantasy VIII, though, how do you rank the classic 7 and 6 in, like, tactics? Oh. So, kind of similar to what I was saying earlier, it, it is kind of tough for me to get into a lot of the older JRPGs with turn-based mechanics, and it gets even harder when it's, like, NES and SNES and, like, PlayStation 1 or whatever, and I, like, these are, like, totally, like, when I was there, I was playing the Dreamcast, so... When it's the the you know annoying uh, random encounters on top of like worse graphics and like <laughs> kind of like barely like the story's like barely there and, and this and that and there's there's so little for me to actually pull from the game. It's hard for me to like really rate a lot of the older ones. Six, I mean eight and six are pretty up there for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't care for seven pretty much at all, um, and I don't care for a lot of the ones that come after seven other than eight. Huh. I like nine. Although it's kind of hard to play now, and I, I didn't play it back when it came out, so I, my, the only way I can play it is now. I own it on Steam. I played it modded with some some like uh, AI scaled, mm. um, AI upscaled uh, graphics. So look, it looks alright, but it is tough to get into. Mm -hmm. My favorite though is Twelve. Final Fantasy Twelve. I feel like is perfect. I love the characters. I love, I love the gameplay, especially the Zodiac uh, like like um, upgrade to the game or whatever. I just it's so good. Final Fantasy Twelve is amazing. My mm. favorite game. One of my favorite games of all time. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah, 12. 12 Interesting. So, okay. I'll just say this now. If you like Final Fantasy fourteen, especially for the story, you're, like, deluding yourself. Deluding yourself! Shit! Final Fantasy is terrible. <laughs> I, like, I have, like, 300 hours in it, and Final Fantasy XIV is terrible. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, as much as, like, I'm really big on JRPG, like, I never really got into Final Fantasy for some reason. Like, the only Final Fantasy... Games I've played are um, three, the, one of the tactics or whatever, and then the rhythm game. <laughs> nice. The, the yeah. theater rhythm, whatever it's called. Yeah, the the funny. theater rhythm or whatever. Yeah. That was cute. <laughs> yeah. Three. Um, I don't even remember how I played three. Like, there was a remake or a port. On one of the portable devices, I feel like. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, never got Good into it. Although it is so popular. <laughs> it is very popular. Yeah. And, and when I was younger, especially, I like hated popular things. Mm. That's why it took me a long time, especially to get into it. Mm. But, uh, yeah, Vavon, boring main character. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. The, for me, it was definitely the side characters and the story and everything. And mm. yeah, it's, 12 is just so good. The, the, mm. It looks pretty. The Ooh. combat's fun. Oh. <sighs> So good. Mm. <laughs> 14 is the game I keep trying to get into, but I quit every time. I mean, that was the best. Yeah. In the arcades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even know they had Nothing it in the new. arcades. <laughs> yeah, great, yeah. 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 That one was really cute. Gambits? Good or bad? <laughs> um... Uh, Gambits, uh, that, that's like the Gambits, what are Gambits again? At the system, like, where you tell your AI what to do or something? I don't remember exactly what Gambits are. I'm yeah, bad with, like, proper they? nouns. <laughs> what are they? What are they? AI system that had them do stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't usually put a whole lot of time into those kind of things. I'm definitely, like, a... Because twelve, I think had had options where you could play it kind of like it was turn based, where you're pausing a lot and you're and you're controlling everyone's actions, mm. or you or you can play it more real time, where it would still like it's still like turn based. Like, I think I don't know if this is the first one that had this like more advanced ATB style, but you could play it kind of more turn based or kind of more like fluid. 
Hmm. Um, I, I usually I, I like to have like full control, so I don't usually do too much like AI stuff. Mm. I, I just want to spend a lot of time <laughs> uh, on it. Well, so yeah, fair. again, it's probably not great for me. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> Hmm. Interesting. Um, is Final Fantasy mostly just um like MMORPG now, or is it still somewhat of a console game? Because I hear people like downloading, updating their fi Final Fantasy games, and I'm like, is it not on consoles anymore? Is it like what is it? <laughs> So there's two Final Fantasy MMOs. Okay. One's dead already. It's Final Fantasy XI. That was like uh, the original Final Fantasy okay. MMO. And I, I believe the team that did that one went to do Final Fantasy XIV, oh. which is funny because I, if I remember correctly, fourteen came out, I don't know, I don't think it was before thirteen, but it, it was really weird, like the order. Huh. And that one came out, and that one originally was like really bad. It mm. died, and then fourteen came back. Mm. Um, and it's like this really super popular thing now. Um, and so usually when you hear about I, the big new Final Fantasy expansion, it's for 14, yes. 14. The most recent one was called Endwalker or whatever, and everyone goes to play it. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the big draw is that for that game is that it's still a Final Fantasy game. It has this Final Fantasy story or whatever, huh. but it's also an MMO, so you can do, like, the online party-based mechanic stuff. Interesting. I, I feel like the story was super uninteresting. I feel like mm -hmm. all MMO stories are super uninteresting, mm -hmm. and that one was no special to me, mm -hmm. like, at all. So I, I don't know. Uh -huh. But that, that's, like, the big... That's definitely, like, one of the biggest ones right now, for sure, especially considering... WoW and Blizzard had all their big scandals, so a lot of MMO mm. veterans, you know, kind of um, went over to Final Fantasy XIV. So now it's like a super big popular thing, even more so probably mm. on the global stage than like Final Fantasy generally is. But mm. like uh, Final Fantasy XVI is going to come out at some point within the next couple of years, and that's like a regular, like just action. I think it's action RPG game now, mm. not online or anything. Interesting. Mm. Action RPG. Yeah, I don't know. I G has been dead. Uh, it's still alive, just not updated. Gets better 100 hours in. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that's, that's, like, that's, like, that's like fucking One Piece. Like, oh, it gets better 400 episodes in. Like, I don't care. It's, it's like, well, and, and, and to be fair, I played those. I played 300 hours in Final Fantasy, which isn't a ton, you know, for an MMO standards. Gosh. But I don't give a shit. Man, man. In JRPG standards, that's a lot of hours, right? <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like one of the longer ones I played, just just base game Persona Five Royal, mm. it was like a, it took me like a hundred hours to beat that game, mm. and uh, yeah, and yeah, I mean, I didn't it didn't take like a hundred hours to to you know have that game start getting interesting. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If it can take another <laughs> game, then no fucking way. Yeah, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I put about like one hundred hours into Nocturne. <laughs> yeah, for yeah, sure. For sure. It's, if you want to do everything, you just gotta put in those hours. Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna play Xenoblade One and Two, but I bought them. Ah, uh, mm. I I cannot stand Xenoblade's combat. Mm. I, I don't know why. It's not even it's not even necessarily too different from Final Fantasy XII, but I just it's just too weird for me. I don't I don't know. It feels weird. No, I played it for like an hour, and I couldn't get into the combat, so I sold it. <laughs> yeah, I said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was weird, but it's so popular. Oh, well, popular yeah, in the community. Popular, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The gameplay seemed a little weird. It was definitely yeah. outside my comfort zone. So I was like, no, I don't I don't think I'll play this. <laughs> it's super annoying with the Xenoblade world design. I'll, yeah, it's super annoying because especially Xenoblade 3 has super cool looking characters. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I want to play this game, but yeah. I know I'm going to hate the combat. Yeah. And a, a game that's similar to that, I don't know if anyone here is familiar with the Tales series, but I'm like uh. a kind of a, a, pretty, a decently mm. big Tales series fan. Mm -hmm. But the newer games... Like Tales of Arise, the mm. character I, I think the character is like pretty cool. I want to mm -hmm. get into it, but I know I'm gonna hate the the combat of the game so mm -hmm. much. So I can't. Yeah, I couldn't get into Tales either because like the skit system and the the combat system like threw me off a little bit. Oh, really? I was like, yeah, I was like, oh, I love the skits. They're uh, so good. You just yeah. walk around, and your party mates start talking, and yeah. it's like the, the, the <laughs> like CGs look so nice. Yeah, maybe if I play it now maybe i'll enjoy it but like yeah back in the days i was like oh kind of weird <laughs> yeah <I don't> know. <laughs> yeah so funny ah. yeah yeah you know although i say i'm a i only play jrpg even within the jrpg genre i feel like i have a very specific taste because <laughs> i yeah, sure. yeah like all the shining games um tales of games like final fantasy like all the big ones, I'm not really into. Well, I guess I'm into Pokemon, but Pokemon is Pokemon. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it's interesting. 
Ah, oh, okay. Maybe I'll play that one. Okay. Okay. Tales of Symphonia is a banger. I, I, that's that's okay, a good game right okay. there. Tales of Asperia, Tales of Symphonia. Mm. If you want like a, a 2D kind of mm. like, like a Game Boy style one, there's Tales mm. of Fantasia. It's really uh, good like starting games, I think. Uh, uh. Tales of the Abyss, yeah. I, uh, I do like remember all these titles. Yeah. I should play yeah, one of them. Sure. Yeah. It, it's just tough though. I mean, it, Steam is nice because there's always sales going on, mm. but it's so hard to to commit to spending your hard-earned money to buy a game and you don't like it. That's like the worst feeling yeah, ever. But that, sure. that, that stops me from playing a lot of games. If I, 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 if I spend 60 bucks on mm -hmm. Tales of Arise, but I know mm -hmm. I'm not going to like it, then I just waste my money. Right. But it's right. Ah. Money and the, the time it takes you to figure out that you don't like it is also sure. pretty annoying. Yeah. Because sometimes you got to put in... Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. no, I was just going to say, because sometimes you got to put in like 20 hours to see if you don't like it or like it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Steam does have a super good refund policy. Really? And, and this is actually something you, I, you should know about. So Steam has a system where if you buy a game, it doesn't matter, you know, I think even during sales or whatever, mm -hmm. you can buy a game. Mm -hmm. And as long as you play it less than two hours, you oh. can refund the game and get like all your money back. And it's like a super nice system. I think you will get back whatever you spent in. So if you buy it on sale, it goes off sale. You're not going to get like 60 bucks when you mm -hmm. pay 20 or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it is it is nice. It's a nice system to like try games. And if you don't like it, you can Interesting. refund. Although th that system is super exploitable. Because yeah. one, one of my favorite genres is like indie horror games. Mm. Indie, indie like, you know, exploration kind of horror mm. games. And a lot of these games last like an hour, two hours, three uh, hours. So th there's a big problem of people uh, buying these games, beating them in like two hours, and then yeah. refunding the game. So these indie devs can't get any fucking money because everyone yeah. keeps refunding their games after yeah. they beat them. Yeah, not good, for, not good for the devs for sure. Yeah, sure. yeah. Because like, uh, what was it? Faith, um, the game, um, Proxy was playing the other day. That yeah. one only took like what two hours. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, I feel like they should look at how long these games are and change that two-hour requirement or lower it for like shorter it, games or something or, yeah. like that. Yeah, Other or, or like let great. the dev opt out or something. Like yeah, that. Or, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Hey, we all okay, gotta make well, money. <laughs> it's been two hours. Do you wanna do you wanna keep going? Do you wanna stop now? I, I'm cool with whatever you feel. Like. I am also cool with whatever. <laughs> oh, no. oh no the indecision begins I now it's going to be five hours before you realize <laughs> <laughs> okay i have one question for you so uh whenever you voice chat or do phone calls with friends or it doesn't matter who it is um just phone calls or voice chats are you the type of person to hang up first or later up first or later yes. I, i'm generally like like a pretty concise person so mm. i feel like the conversation has run its course i mm. like to just mm. and, and especially because i know a lot of people like i could just sit in a voice call and not say a lot to somebody and like, mm -hmm. i'm gonna feel fine mm -hmm. but a lot of people don't like that like silence so mm. i'm usually the one to be like all right well you know good talking to you but you know i gotta mm. go or whatever like that you know? oh sorry maybe no that's a good answer too but let me rephrase my question because uh uh another question um so you when when you're like you know done talking and you're saying like bye bye see you you know next time or whatever whatever do you wait for the other person to hang up first or do you just say bye and then hang up? Oh, <laughs> um, I also say bye and hang up like fast. Bye yeah. hang up. Okay, okay. <laughs> I see. Because if if you don't do it, if you don't if you don't like do it it's mm -hmm. gonna be like all right bye oh, okay bye yeah, yeah mm -hmm. i'll see you later yeah, mm -hmm. we'll talk like next week or something all right all right bye yeah all right, okay. have a good day. and it's like it keeps like i just all right goodbye hang up Boom, mm -hmm. i see i see i see i see i i don't know why i have this thing i always have to wait until the other person to hang up first so i'll be like bye oh. and then wait until they hang up <laughs> It's so weird. No, I don't know why. Yeah, no. When I, when I say bye, it's like you. You better not have anything else to say. Cause I'm pressing that button. Yeah. <laughs> Diego said Satan hanging up while saying goodbye. Yeah, pretty much. Like, hey, goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. 
And sometimes it's really funny if I'm talking to somebody like me and we're both just waiting for the other person to hang up first. So we just sit there in silence for like two minutes. Right? That's and what like, I'm saying. Yeah, I, 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 hey, I want to wait. I'm like, all right, boom, done. <laughs> want to hang up like, first? I, you know, I'll give like, like a last word. Like if you got anything else to say, like, you know. <laughs> and But then after I say goodbye, you know, I'm yeah. pressing that button. Like, yeah. oh, sorry, goodbye. Yeah. They'll call back. That's important. Yeah, like they'll DM me. They'll call back. If mm -hmm. I cut them off, well, I'm sorry. I said goodbye. Already. What do you expect from me? <laughs> like... I mean, like this is what I'm saying when I say when I say like I overthink everything. I don't know why I have to overthink things like this too. Like I'm like, let me let the other person hang up first. <laughs> it is so weird. I don't know. <laughs> they'll call back if it's important, Satan. <laughs> sure. Exactly. Yeah. They'll DM yeah, me. They'll call true. back. They'll do whatever. You know. And they know true. how to reach me. <laughs> I, and and I will if I cut someone off. I kind of do expect like. And it depends on how close I am with this person. Mm. It's like one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I cut them off, I'm gonna let them come back to me. But if it's like someone I'm, I'm kind of new with, and mm -hmm. you know they don't know how I am, I will be like, all right, I'll call back or I'll shoot you on my cam. Sorry, I hung up on you. Like, what, what was that last thing you were gonna say or whatever? Uh. It's, it's not like I'm super like mean or whatever. No, but, no, know, no. I mean, press that button. You can always text too. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean. No, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't trying to say like one's better than the other. Just, no, just no, curious. I get you, yeah, yeah, because <laughs> like, although I, me, I mean, it is kind of a villainous, you know, stance. <laughs> my stance is kind of a villainous stance. Like I like that. Like I, you know, mm -hmm. it's funny. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm down. It's funny. No, like in my case, I actually want people to just hang up because I don't oh, want to okay. talk to somebody like me. <laughs> I just wanted to hang up so that I can hang up too. <laughs> so really, yeah, yeah, it's good. yeah. So it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hang up for evil. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> evil. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah, it, it is literally like call purgatory if like I'm talking to somebody like me, just yeah. forever like this. <laughs> so yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, somebody was saying something up there. Let's see. She just seems to be asking things and saying stuff. <laughs> I mean, if anybody has like questions or like important things to say, please do. It's like we hit like all our uh, topics and questions pretty much. Do a trailing quieter and quieter by over the phone like this. <laughs> um, no. um, okay. Oh, well, no. question. For Digo, uh, question for Digo, uh, do you also, <laughs> when talking to an Asian person over the phone, do you do you bow as you hang up or, or no? I do. I'm so Asian <laughs> when it comes to like talking on the phone. Like if I know the, the other person is Asian, I'm like, okay, thank you. Bye. And then I hang up. <laughs> Mm, games you're thinking about streaming after your turn to die so i was actually thinking about doing maybe ps4 games because i can just do remote play on my uh imac desktop mac or whatever uh that way i can stream like really late at night i don't know if that's yeah, because I'm still trying to figure out like the the best time for streaming. Uh, but yeah, I was thinking about maybe trying a PS4 game uh, next week. Maybe I'll play another visual novel. Um, the the house in Fata Morgana was it? Yeah, I was thinking. <laughs> Mook is like, oh no, <laughs> Rin, no. <laughs> No, 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 I mean, yeah, exactly. Now, now with my friends, like, for example, Digo, if I, like, if I'm talking to you over the phone, I won't be doing, like, bye, Digo, you know, I won't be doing that. <laughs> um, like, uh, like an elderly person. Um, yeah, if I'm talking to, like, um, I don't know, like, next door neighbor who's a grandma that's Asian, if I have to talk to her on the phone, I'd be like, okay, thank you, bye-bye. You do that, too. It's so sad. Being Asian is so sad sometimes. <laughs> Oh uh, my goodness. Phones are so weird. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, I mean, I already asked you this question, but the chat doesn't know. So I want to ask you, Elliot, this question again. Uh, do you have a fear of phone calls? <laughs> um, 
I feel like I definitely, you know, I, I definitely understand the anxiety mm -hmm. and why people do have fears of phone calls and stuff. And there's like different levels. Like some people have trouble with like interpersonal, like real life social interactions. Some mm -hmm. people have trouble with like emails, some people it's calls. Mm -hmm. um, for me, the more information I have, mm -hmm. or the more like visual information, or not, not just visual, but just information I can get from somebody about how they're feeling about the conversation and just in general, um, I feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. So phone calls is like, kind of like a, a middle ground where like emails i feel like it's really awkward because i don't really i can't really get a lot of information from them about how they're feeling mm. about the conversation or like me or whatever yeah and it's a great it goes from like emails or whatever phone calls and they're all right and then mm. i my i vastly prefer like video calling or like mm. just you know really just being in the same room with someone and talking for sure for so sure. like a tiny bit but not, not like a fear or anything mm -hmm. for sure mm -hmm. yeah yeah for sure uh, I guess for me, it depends. Uh, some people or like some, um, uh, some like customer center calls that I have to make. Some, some are okay, but like most of the time, I do get like really bad anxiety about like talking on the phone. Like sometimes, especially for work, um, I'll like I'll have scripts written down to read off of because. I'm so anxious about like calling people over the phone. I don't know why it's such a scary thing, but yeah, phone calls yeah. in general are scary. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but definitely like face to face is better too. Like for example, if I have to, uh, I mean, for example, Verizon, <laughs> instead of like calling them, I would rather go to a Verizon store to ask them a question. You know that way it's sure, yeah. yeah that way it's easier or better quicker <laughs> through very quicker yeah, yeah for sure yeah uh and do what you do hopefully you're aware and constantly make verbal formation like uh -huh, oh yeah uh -huh. yeah <laughs> yeah Backed into a corner. <laughs> face to face, no escape. Good. I'm keeping you here. You have to look at me and talk to me. You can't escape. Just You're stuck here with me. Just stares. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yes, I will fight. <laughs> when back Absolutely. into a corner. Fight <laughs> uh... verbally and physically. <laughs> Uh, made fun of for making those affirmations, really? But you're being, you're letting the other person know that you are listening, though. That's interesting. I do it all the time. I feel weird if I don't make those like affirm affirmations because it seems weird. I mean, I don't know. Is it really a Japanese thing? I don't know. <laughs> it does. I'll, I'll say for me, like. Mm. I, it now might I'm just doing be a, like a preconception <laughs> you're doing now. It mm -hmm. might just be a preconception I have. But I like I just when I'm talking to someone, mm -hmm. I have like this base level expectation. Unless I know mm. something else about them, I just assume they're listening. So mm. when I hear like the like the affirmations over their back, it it it's a little jarring to me because I'm just not used to it. And I just mm -hmm. assume they're listening anyways. But that's just that's just me personally. I don't mm. know if that's like a super American like centric thing or whatever or like western or whatever but mm -hmm. that's definitely how i am for sure like mm -hmm. i just assume they're listening mm -hmm. and when i get those affirmations back i'm like whoa okay you're like you're like double listening or <laughs> mm. <laughs> now i'm now i'm gonna be like so conscious about this you, you can you totally do it it's fine if you're comfortable <laughs> with it then go ahead and do it but it's just oh, like yes. yeah i because I do it. Still see it as distracting sometimes. Yeah, a little bit. I think I, I think I see a little. But I, I I'm okay with anything. So if you if you mm. whatever makes you most comfortable conversation, you can do it. It's just yeah. I don't know. I just do it without thinking. Like I, I guess I know. I mean, I am aware that I'm doing it, but I do it without thinking. <laughs> that is so interesting. As you can see from this this entire conversation, um. I don't really talk to that many people on a daily basis, so yeah. like I've never gotten this feedback before. That's so interesting. Huh. You know, constantly asking if you're listening <laughs> just to cause chaos. <laughs> oh man. Oh, because they're think they think you're talking over them. That is Ah. Wow, now I'm going to be overthinking this as well. 
Oh no! <laughs> Thank you, Digo. Thank you. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess if you guys here find it annoying, I'll I'll try my best to tone it down. I don't. I don't give a shit. You can do whatever you want. You can talk, you can talk over me too. I I don't care. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I I am aware. It's just that I do it without thinking because it's like like a second nature to me. I guess I. I know, but I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> uh, sometimes I, I just say yeah, yeah, <laughs> and have no idea what's going on. <laughs> That's fair too. Sometimes I do that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Honestly, the, the I, it's funny when you do that, and you're like, yeah, oh, oh yeah. And then, and then I slip into a thing where it's like, oh, that, that's sick, bro. Like, oh, that's so cool. Mm. And then and they'll have said something bad. And they'll be like, that's not, that's, what do you mean? It's not cool. <laughs> like, oh, uh, shit, wait. I mean, that's uh, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've done that before, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a friend who just speaks in a confusing way. So I do that to him all the time. Mm. And most of the time, I understand what he's saying, but I don't know, like, what he means. So, like, oh, like, he'll say something about, like, a car he wants to buy. Uh -huh. he'll, he'll say some some fact about it. And I'm like, oh, that, that, that's cool. He's like, no, it's not cool. I'm like, well, fuck, I don't know. Like, what do you what do you want from me? What do you want from me? <laughs> like, tell me, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. That is too funny. <laughs> um, mm, not, not speaking in a very confusing way, but uh, my mom also kind of talks fear sometimes. Uh, like, she says... She's not, but sometimes it to me it sounds like she is stopping mid sentence. But to her, that oh, that was it. But to oh, me, it sounds I, like I have a friend who does that same thing. Yeah, yeah it's but, crazy. Yeah, it's so crazy. So it feels like there should be something more after that. So I'm like, yeah, okay. and then yeah. and she's like, huh? And I'm like, yeah. So like, well, well, after that, like, what 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 what's happening? And she's like. What do you mean? I'm like, no, you, you said this, but you stopped. And she's Literally, like, yeah, I do. oh, no, oh, that was like, it. I, like I have a friend, his name is Connor, and he, I, I call them Connor stories. He'll like say something about his life or what he did today or something. And I'm like, okay, and then? Like, he's like, I went to the store and got some milk. And I was like, yeah, and? And he's like, that's it. I'm that's like, it. <laughs> And it, 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 there's other ones. It's not. It's not always that like obvious. But like, I'm just like, what? I don't know what you're saying because it's like you're stopping somewhere, and I feel like I need more context or something. Like, I don't know. Oh my god, it's too funny. It's so weird. <laughs> Too funny. Just say Dan has crazy for everything. Yeah, I, well, so to, well to be re to seem really engaged with the conversation, you just mm -hmm. mix it up like Dan has crazy. Oh, that's wild. Like, yeah, dang, yeah, whoa. for sure. Just keep keep changing it. Just keep it energy heads. <laughs> <laughs> just um have like five stock responses, <laughs> and just yeah, like change yeah, up and change a little word here yeah. or there, and just keep going. Yeah, yeah just keep going. <laughs> oh, too funny. Damn, that's crazy. Damn. Or just keep it short and say damn. You can say damn to everything, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. Like, man, I had a shitty day. Damn. Man, I damn, saw something I saw so cool today. Damn. 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 <laughs> just change the tone. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. Also, I find English really interesting. Like, you can literally have a conversation with one word um, by changing your tone. Like, True, yeah, yeah, 100%. interesting. English is interesting. What's that thing that blocks water? Damn. Damn. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I left at the. Uh, I I I love these uh stupid uh puns. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> or should I say? Damn. Now it looks no. like I'm not laughing, but I that was a good one. <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Damn. <laughs> or the the man, <laughs> the man picture. Man, yeah, yeah the man. pretty horse. <laughs> Imagine Ropuski will be saying "damn" a lot in the chat. He'll be like, "damn." <laughs> Yeah, oh, dude, yeah, that little freaking <laughs> Ropuski brain it has so much damn in, in its little freaking noggin there. <laughs> Just damn and shit. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, child, no. I gotta, I gotta filter out the other words, I guess. <laughs> oh, too funny. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> man, man. <laughs> Damn. No, like, Damn. my child will not be smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all gotta cope somehow, man. <laughs> Just licking the lollipop. <laughs> like in Tama, yeah. He could do that. <laughs> like fake. I'm kind of blunt again. <laughs> I, I can't tell if uh, Proxy is joking or or no. Do people that's think... true. That's that's intense because cigarettes, tobacco, uh, it smells so bad. That's on the Huh? Because it smells so bad. I guess if you're a smoker, it doesn't smell bad. I guess that's why you smoke. I, I don't well I don't know no. because especially when it's on you I mm. feel like I feel like a lot of people have a hard time smelling stuff that's like close on to them yeah, especially when sure. it's close to them a lot because yeah. they get used to it huh. but the problem specifically with smoking that I can't stand like I already don't like the smell so that sucks but I've smoked a lot of weed in my time and that mm -hmm. that smell doesn't like get stuck into people's clothes and linger forever. Mm. Cigarettes and tobacco like it like sticks onto every like sticks onto your clothes yeah. and like even if you're not even if you haven't smoked that day, even if you've washed your yeah. clothes, like you'll you'll it's smell there. like a smoker. Like it's it's really unfortunate. Yeah, for sure. Uh, <clears throat> wait, gasoline too? How? Oh. Do you also like the smell of Sharpies then? <laughs> I mean <laughs> I don't know if I like smell the, the smell, but I like smelling them, you know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what are we? You might just like strong sense. Interesting. Maybe. Could be. Could be. Huh. Well, there's like, there's like that gene or something, right? Mm. That like makes yes. you taste a certain thing better yes. or worse. Some of the people, maybe it's the same with like smells, I guess. Yes, yes, for sure. Uh, like for me, I like scents. Um, like. I like perfumes, um, but I guess not much outside side outside of that. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard. I guess I don't like strong scents. I mean, likes pennies and nickels. Wait, pennies and nickels. Did they, did they, did they smell? <laughs> I mean, money smells, but... Uh, favorite scents. Uh, that's really hard. Uh, people here will probably laugh at me, but I love... Uh, if you've been to a, <laughs> a Buddhist temple or like shrines, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. I love temple smells. <laughs> Temple smells. Uh, my favorite favorite um, perfume literally smells like that. It's it, it, I, a lot of people probably like find it really strange, but I I like I like those weird scents. What is the weirdest thing you've smelled that you can remember? Do you have anything, Elliot? Uh... The weirdest thing that I've smelled that I can remember. I don't, know, I don't know what weird would be. Yeah, I don't know what weird would be. I mean, I, I've worked at like a lot of restaurants and diners and cafes. So, I, you know, you get used to smelling like weird combinations of food and then weird combinations of food that's come up out of somebody's body in the bathroom, like at 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. or whatever in the middle of the night. So, like, I, I've definitely smelled some weird stuff, but like, I don't know if like super strange. Mm. Um. Mm. You know, like how your brain remembers like smells you like, like good smells, um, and you always have a like, memory attached to the smells that you remember. Um, but like when it comes to like weird smells, I don't, I can't think of anything. Um... Oh yeah, wait, mm. Diko's right. We've all been the cons. Maybe something. Ah! Like, Expo twenty fourteen. Ah! <laughs> 
That's the strangest smell I've ever smelled. Uh, B.O. <laughs> B.O. then. <laughs> <laughs> like how, how can like we're all humans and I I'm I'm used to how I smell so how yeah. can like other how can other humans smell mm -hmm, so bad it's crazy right? <laughs> Oh my gosh what are these people thinking of <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness We we probably don't want to know <laughs> That is yeah, too funny. Yeah, I mean, yeah, strong BO probably. Yeah. Mm, well, I guess um a a real skunk when I like smelled it for the first time when I was a kid was pretty shocking. Yeah. So, I can see that. Maybe that? Maybe that? <laughs> the abnormal you don't want to know. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, we probably should not know. <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah, with this, I don't... I just don't know a good stopping point. Because we could literally just go on forever and forever. Uh, so I wasn't sure if we should put a hard stop on things after two hours or if we should just be flexible. We're, I'm, I'm still I, learning. I think it's pretty safe to put a hard stop at three hours. You think so? Although, okay. Although I haven't eaten today, so I, I we could stop now. I can go eat. Oh, that's right. You did mention that we want you to eat, actually. <laughs> we really want you to eat. We really do. Uh, I think, can't think of any... We don't need to know that. <laughs> yeah, I could order some freaking Panda Express right now. I could get their or Beyond the Orange Chicken real quick. Try it for the first time on Mukbang stream. Oh, man. Yeah, please go eat. Yes. I might. Please. <laughs> I ate, like, way earlier, like, at, like, 10 or something. Oh, my I gosh. I, I feel very bad. I heard you say that, and now I... Why did I not I, I think mean, anything of it? I bad I'm, about anything. I'm, really <laughs> I'm here of my own volition. I, we're in a Discord call, you know, if I could just press the end button if I wanted to leave. <laughs> Panda. <laughs> cannibals in chat? Ooh. I think that's something to eat. Yes, please go little, eat. Uh, little sweet Todd moment. Yes, please go eat. Oh, uh, well. It's really, it stays ahead. in your mouth for days. I don't care what it is. I, I don't know if I've ever had a Panda Express egg roll. I don't know. Same. Like maybe I'll go try one right now. Yes. <laughs> And you will have to let us know. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Yes, yes. Well, well thank you guys for uh, coming to uh, the first radio episode. And thank you so much for Elliot Satan for being the first guest. That's like bravery right there because nobody else wanted to do it. <laughs> Well, so, so here's how it is, right? So it's either, you know, I come on and it's a good time and, you know, it's and, and people that come on in the future are like, okay, it's going to be a good time. Or I come on and I'm really bad and then at oh, least the people no. in the future are like, hey, I can't be as bad as that guy. So it's a win-win for you, I guess. <laughs> but it's fine. I, here's I, the, I just want that. It's cool. No. I, I like this. I'll, I'm going to come on whenever you want me to. Yeah, there, this is the secret. Like, you cannot be bad. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> It's true, true, yeah. That's homie, it's yes. <laughs> yes, he is so good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just, I just hope you enjoyed being a guest, you know? I hope yeah, it was for a sure. I mean, anytime, I'm, I mean, I'm yes. always on my computer working, so anytime yeah. you want to talk, I'm, I'm yeah. always down, yeah. For sure. I'm always down to having, like, you on, so, yeah, I guess, it depends on your time. I mean, I'll be streaming anyway, so, yes. For sure. Yeah. You, you cannot be bad at navigating <laughs> time. Yeah. You cannot be bad. Yes, you cannot not be bad. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. I had a lot of fun. This is... Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Hopefully other people enjoyed this first episode of the Rinde Radio. Yay! Uh, so next week um, will be Proxy and the Narby. Right? Where am I? I think, so. I, think I, I checked the schedule. And I think I just right. I saw, I said that. Yeah, I think it was like this 18th yes. or 17th or something. Like that yes, I am. yes, yes. Andy and Thanks. Nathan. And I already um, have started working on some questions. Uh, they rather turned out really philosophical, but uh, I think it'll be nice. a nice tie into your turn to die. Hoseki uh, no Kuni, which all three of us really like. And then um, just general 
um the the ship of um uh, what how do you say this in english um theseus is is that the english pronunciation when you're like asian the pronunci the greek pronunciations are always messed up <laughs> but uh yes we'll have an interesting um conversation i think yes reko and cool. sarah as well. sounds fun yeah yeah i think it will be fun so well thank you everyone um for joining hopefully you guys are looking forward to episode two and the greatest thanks to elliot for being a guest and for the ropuske bot the cutest ropuske bot oh yeah one last love yes yeah one i, last I got 100 percent love on ropuske real quick one all right hold the hold love. hold pray hold <laughs> oh, oh wait, i missed the answer button oh no oh my god oh, i can't get above 50 percent. i got like 36 40, 40 10 Oh, sorry. There's a cooldown of ten. Oh, cooldown. That's right. That's sorry. right. Sorry, I forget. It's okay. Okay. Fifty. Oh, oh, oh. You or I'll do oh. it. Wait, I, wait. Hold up. Hold up. What? I, I can, I can take off the, I can take off the cooldown real quick. I'll do it live. <laughs> hold up. Um, give me two seconds. No so I have. Uh, if not, self cooldown. So I'll comment out this. I'll save it, and then I can do, I can do this command in the chat. <laughs> Reload so love. Cool. Okay, you should. I think you can just do it. So we can do no! love rope escape. Everybody. No. Two percent. Yes. No. There you go. No, no, no. Hello, you're Two percent. Oh, no. I know. Nice. No. Oh, wait. Hello, you're 80%. I, I did finally get 80. No! Yeah, well, I took off the cooldown, so it's happy no! with me now. Yeah. <laughs> wait, I have to do it one more time. Rope pusu okay. Oh, oh. Oh. Oh no! I thought we were wow, <laughs> I, at least not two. I just, I just, ten times better than your last one. That's that's a pro. Yeah, better than two percent. My son. Better than two percent. Uh, All right. Well, thanks for having me on. This is really yeah, cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um. Thank you for. Thank you. The first time chatter. We are actually done with this radio episode. <laughs> um. Hopefully you'll come check us out <laughs> okay, next he, week. <laughs> yeah, that first time chatter is my best friend. So he, he's chilling. Don't worry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Hope you Bye, guys. Have fun. It was fun talking to you all. Bye.